something was falling to the ground with incredible speed, and at the same time it seemed to be asleep, because it was snoring. At the same time, someone shouted at him to wake up calling him master. When the guy finally woke up, he felt the wind hitting him hard in the face, and even at the beginning he thought that he had become a flying squirrel. But of course it was not so. When he opened his eyes, he saw a huge world. Of course, the first thing he wondered was where the hell to destroy it, and then he noticed another anomaly. He was fat, sensing what a stalemate he was in. The guy did not find what to do, and succumbing to panic, yelled. Immediately, a voice rang in his head, saying that he was not a flying squirrel, so he had to activate magic. But the guy was not up to it, because he was falling from a great height, and if he crashed into the ground, he would definitely die. The voice asked what he was waiting for, and then the guy decided it was better to do something, and started shouting, he knew something. At first, just fly, then the call of the flying broom, then I remembered the carpets of airplanes. But nothing helped. The voice in his head was at a loss from his words and asked what this guy was talking about. It would be better for him to say swim. Then the guy did as he was told, and finally the wind gave in, and it was as if something stopped gravity. When the guy was happy about it, thinking that finally this damn magic was activated, he began to fall again. Of course he started saying a short spell again. But of course he didn't stop and just crashed into the ground kicking up dust. The guy wondered how he could defeat the evil god in such a state. Let's go back a few minutes earlier. The plane was flying across the expanse of the sky, and inside someone was playing with a paper frog. The voice of the pilot came from the speakers, who informed the ladies and gentlemen that they would be landing soon. Then I asked them to make sure that their seats and tray tables are in their original position and their seat belts are securely fastened. The guy who was sitting with the girl nodded. He had just finished his job and was returning to Japan. As a reward for the successful conclusion of a major contract, his boss ordered him a business class ticket. It was very convenient. Business trips abroad can be quite boring, but since this girl who sits with him is very friendly, he made a happy memory. A guy told the girl that they were about to return, so he had to bring her back, to which she nodded, and then asked if she could see her older brother again. The guy nodded with a smile, to which the girl reacted joyfully. And then there was a crack and a hole appeared in the floor of the plane. Everything suddenly froze, and the guy felt like his time had stopped. Suddenly, someone's voice rang out, telling him that from the point of view of knowledge, he was suitable. The guy did not understand what it was at first and wondered if it was really a hallucination. Or maybe he was inside a dream. Suddenly, the voice appeared in his head again and informed the guy that he was not hallucinating. She was speaking directly into his mind. Then this female voice told him to relax his body, adding that he would feel less fucking tiring if he talked to his thoughts. The guy asked if he was really dead, and if it was God or King Enma. Then the voice said that he was pretty calm, wasn't he? Then she said that he was right about being a god, but he wasn't dead yet. The guy was not at all reassured by this, and he asked what she meant that the guy would die after that. The guy thought that he was probably going to die and he heard that no one meets God and does not receive help from him. Then the girl said that this also applies to him. Unfortunately, due to the explosion that has just occurred, all passengers will die. The guy didn't even know what to say, and then the girl said that time was short, and therefore she had to say what she came for. Then the girl said that she was a goddess who ruled another world. As soon as the guy heard this, he had a bad feeling. The girl said that she already has permission from the god of this world to summon a hero. The guy squinted at this suspicious lady and said that the hero's summoning was of a suspicious level. She should tell him everything, because it definitely wouldn't be a good idea. The girl shuddered at his thoughts, and then said that she wanted him to come to his world and defeat the evil god who was sealed deep in the dungeon. She at least wants him to seal it. The guy closed his eyes, shook his head and said that he would certainly apologize, but he would probably refuse. The surprised girl said that but then he would die. Then the guy said that everything was fine, because he had a pretty good life. Upon hearing this, the girl said that she looked like she was in trouble, but he should like it, so why? The guy nodded and said that of course he loves things like reincarnation and ice sky, but he just likes the stories in it and if he had to do it all in its entirety, defeat some demon king or something like that, then isn't it dangerous? Of course he doesn't want something like this. He'd rather die like this than do something so dangerous. From his words, the girl was in despair and with tears in her eyes. She screamed at him not to say such things and defeat the evil god. The girl said that virtually all the passengers on this plane, and there is only one person who can be saved. The guy asked that it could be this girl, to which the self-proclaimed goddess nodded. The guy looked at her accusingly, and said that she was asking him to accept her request to reincarnate in her world in exchange for the life of this girl. 
The outraged blonde, clenching her fists, said that she had not said anything like that. It's just that he can help her if he sacrifices his life. The guy said he wanted to save her if possible. Nodding, the girl said that she understood and therefore he should wait a minute to fulfill his wish. Some time later, the girl sighed and said that she had talked to the god of this world and it seemed like he was a pretty greedy guy. As soon as they finished talking, she should probably do something about it. The guy nodded and thanked her for listening to his selfish request. Then the girl said that it was because if he rejected her, her world might not have much time. Nodding, the guy said that since she had already paid the price for saving her life, he would accept her request to summon him to another world in exchange. Of course, this news pleased the girl and she said that then his memory and do would be reincarnated. The surprised guy said that this was reincarnation and not a call after his death. And now there are a couple of cases left. First, make a video recording of the hole in the fuselage using a smartphone. The second is to send the video he just shot via messages to his sister, who is waiting for him at the airport. And three, call her and tell her what he wants to say. When the girl on the other side of the phone picked up the phone, she immediately told her brother not to worry, because she would meet him at the airport. The guy did not let her finish, he told her to write down what he would say, and the girl turned on the recording and asked why Nada was doing this. The guy immediately said that the plan had failed, so all his savings and money from insurance remain with her. Then he shouted at the old man, and said that if he put his hand to his inheritance, he would become an evil spirit and would haunt him until the very end of his days. Then he left a message to his mother, asking her forgiveness for dying before her. Then he also thanked his aunt for everything she had done for him. The surprised girl sister indignantly asked if his brother thought it was too much for a joke. The guy continued, saying that he was going to save one girl, and for this, he needed his location to be tracked through his phone. Since he wants to save her, he wants help to arrive as soon as possible. And finally, he is glad that he could hear her voice saying goodbye. With that, the guy hung up the phone. Let's move on to the following points. Fourth, take a travel sewing kit and sew a thin sheet to his clothes. Fifth, put three memory pillows between him and the child and tie her tightly to yourself. The sixth point is to confirm the replacement of fuel and when he was ready, he got up from his seat and then the girl who served him, in a panic, screamed that he was doing it. Had he gone mad with fear? Even if that's the case, he shouldn't involve the child in it. He has to go by himself. The guy smiled and asked for forgiveness and said that he would not listen to her. She did her best until the very end. Meanwhile, the girl began to cry loudly and scream that she was scared. The guy smiled and said that everything was fine, she should trust him and just close her eyes. He's going to return her to her mom safe and sound. The seventh point is to send the message to the sister, at the moment about 5 kilometers from the airport and put the bodies in a life jacket and finally bend down. So he went to earth screaming that he was a flying squirrel. The poor girl called to his stomach screamed in fright and began to fall. Feeling that something was wrong, he fell into the water and screamed that he couldn't swim, and then he woke up in this world in the sky. As he fell, he used magic and saw that although he was slowing down, it was clearly not enough. And then someone grabbed him and the guy realized that it was a dragon, and then he was thrown. His eyes snapped open, and when he wanted to jump up, he realized that he couldn't get up. It was difficult for him to move. When he did it somehow, he was shocked when he saw his reflection, and at the same time his head began to hurt sharply and someone's memories began to float in front of his eyes with incredible speed. And then the guy realized what was going on. From the crash, the door of his room opened and he was called by the name of Luke, while adding Mr. Two men burst into the room, and one ran up, seeing the trembling fat man and asked Mr. Luke if he was alright, but the trembling guy did not answer, and then this man told the second one to call the doctor faster. Covered in a cold sweat, the guy thought that his name was really Luke, but now he understood. His soul and memories have moved into this body. The reincarnation of another person's soul and memories, it sounded very annoying and so he fell into oblivion again, and woke up again, this time from someone's scream, who asked him how long he was going to sleep. The guy abruptly opened his head and looked at the speaker, and the doctor helped him to sit up. The guy asked that he was his father, which is why the old man punched him in the head. Of course, the guy did not understand what it was for, and with a fight, he wondered why he was being beaten, and did they really want to kill him. The guy immediately called up the status window, but there was nothing. Puzzled, he looked at the bracelets in his hand and understood the reason. It was a magical sealing bracelet, a type of magical item that prohibits the wearer from using magic. It seems that he has been reborn into the third prince of a large country. As Luke is infamous, a notorious scoundrel in this kingdom. All Luke is famous for is his bad behavior and the rumors that go around about him. 
He was known among the people as the Orc Prince. The guy sighed heavily, thinking that even sighing was difficult for him. Looking at his body, the guy could think that the goddess was too cruel. There are too many rumors about the person he turned into. It's going to be damn hard for him to live like Luke. He doesn't seem to sense Luke's consciousness. He must have died in that accident. Suddenly, an irritated old man's voice rang out in front of the guy, who asked him what he was thinking about. Was he reflecting on his mistakes? He shouldn't have such a big problem because of a weak punch. The guy mentally denied the words of this old man thinking that he was definitely dying. Sighing, the guy said he was sorry. Then he asked about why he was wearing this magic ceiling bracelet. Then the old man shouted that it was so that he would not run away. The old man became enraged and shouted that every time he misbehaves, he doesn't even think about it and just runs away. The guy, feeling awkward, thought that this old man was right because he had so many memories of escaping from home. By the way, he's now wondering what happened to that dragon. Then the guy asked his father, adding the prefix dear about what happened to the dragon. The old man flinched, but it was only for a second. Feeling awkward, the king of the country said that by the time he got there, he was already dead. He protected the guy. The guy remembered that Luke had been pouring magic into that dragon since childhood, when it was an egg. He took care of him from the moment he was born. Suddenly, the guy felt moisture in his eyes and on his face and realized that he was crying. Dumbfounded, the guy wondered if these tears were really Luke's emotions. Noticing this, the old man said that it looked like even he could be sad about it. Then GHG asked his dear father if he could leave him alone for a while, to which the old man got up from his seat and said that it was too late to regret. He must remember what he has done. Some time later, the guy, feeling tired, thought that the emotions from his memories had finally subsided. He thinks he will have to analyze and sort the memory a bit. He turned into Luca Volga, who was 15 years old. Besides being able to control a dragon, he is the lowest teacher in his class. But even so, he was an elite. Even if he was an idiot, he was still an elite. He was accepted into the Dragon Knights Academy, where not many people can enroll. The incident occurred on the last day of the midterm exams. The king came to watch and it's practically a driving test. Of course, Luke was inspired and grinned and thought that now he would show what he was capable of. Unlike humans, the dragon's field of vision is 350 degrees and they do not like when a person is in their only blind spot. A dragon that sees someone entering its blind spot has a habit of reflexively attacking with its tail, and this of course leads to disaster. It looks like Luke died instantly at that moment, and then the guy remembered the voice in his head and wondered what it was. It was most likely the voice of an AI. Then he remembered that the goddess had said that as a support, she would grant him a set of three heroic skills. When the guy asked what kind of skill it was, the girl said that it was evaluation, search and storage. Then the guy also thought that he would also like AI navigation. The one who navigates for him is in the games. When the girl realized what she was talking about, she nodded. The guy wondered if he couldn't hear the navigation AI because of the magic ceiling bracelet. It seems that's why he can't summon it. While he was thinking about his own, suddenly someone reported that Luke Sama had visitors. The guy started and looked up and saw three girls. In front was a brunette with a hard look, followed on one side by a blonde beauty with an anxious look, and on the other by a small girl with a face full of interest. The guy just wanted to apologize to his dear mother, as the brunette screamed that he was just incredible. Does he have any idea how much trouble he's caused? Then the blonde girl anxiously said that she was very glad that he had woken up and was safe. The guy made a regretful face and said that he was stung, that he made his beloved stepmother worry about him. And then a little girl clung to him who joyfully asked that his dear brother was already getting better. The guy looked at those big eyes and said that he was sorry that he made Kyra worry about himself. He's fine now. At the same time, his mother harshly told Luke that a decision on his departure would be made within a few days. At this time, he should sit contentiously. The guy didn't quite understand what she was talking about, what kind of care. Well, so he asked dear mother what she meant by leaving. Enraged, the woman screamed asking what he was talking about. Does he really think that a teacher who has lost his dragon can still attend the Dragon Knights Academy? Feeling fear, the guy thought about what he understood now. Some time later, the mothers and sister left, and while the guy was resting in front of the mirror, there was a knock. Luke was informed that he had a visitor and turning around, the guy thought that too many people were visiting him today. When the door opened, a girl with blonde hair and tears in her eyes rushed into the guy's arms. It was Luke Lulu, or rather Luludo's Merrill and she was 16 years old. She is dressed in a school uniform, and is the second daughter of the Marquis. 
When she was six, she got engaged to Luke, and Luke always seemed to love her very much. The girl whined with worry in her eyes that she was so worried about him, since he hadn't come to his senses for two whole days. The guy said he was sorry for making her worry. At the same time, the girl who stood behind Lulu with an indifferent face said that she was glad that he looked better than she expected. The guy said he was sorry for bothering his dear sister. Then the girl said that it was difficult for her to say this, but however his engagement to Lulu was terminated. The guy froze at first, and then shouted indignantly asking what she meant. The sister is thinking that she does not know all the details, but she is sure that the reason lies in this incident. The guy turned to Lulu and asked her if she had heard anything about it, and she nodded. The girl said that today at noon, the king himself paid a visit to the residence to talk with her father about breaking off the engagement. His recent behavior had caused her father concern, so he agreed to break off the engagement. After that, he did not provide her with any more details. Lulu, feeling guilty, asked for forgiveness. The guy, with cold sweat running down his face, thought that there was nothing he could do about it. Clenching his chubby fist, the guy told Lulu that because of her connection with him, a shadow fell on her. He apologizes, but understands her father's feelings. When his house arrest is lifted, can she tell him that he will go apologize? The girl was shocked and screamed and asked if he really agreed to break off their engagement. The guy sighed and said that she should find a better partner than him, the Orc Prince. From his remark, the girl blushed, and then her eyes moistened, and she said that although she expected him to go back to his old ways one day, it was so cruel. Luke is a fool, she said, and ran away. The guy blushed and did not understand what it was. He's not the dumb protagonist of the novel, so he understands, but does Lulu like Luke too? And then the enraged sister screamed, asking what Luke was thinking when he said this. He should go and apologize. The guy turned to his dear sister, saying that he was under house arrest. The embarrassed girl smacked him in the face with gusto and began puffing and shouting that he was a dumbass. With tears in his eyes, the guy thought that he was crying because both his fiancée and his sister had abandoned him. He even wondered if there would be rumors about it. The next morning, the guy was sitting on the bed thinking that he gets sad when he thinks about what happened to Lulu yesterday. Sighing, the guy thought that his memories evoke emotions, but he doesn't want that. Just because Luke likes her doesn't mean he likes her either, so it's hard for him to deal with someone who suddenly became his spouse. He is sure that the goddess forced him to transform into a prince in the first place because of the time and money needed to give him the strength to defeat the evil god. And with the support of the royal family, he can do things that seem impossible. Filled with a decision, the guy decided that he would do strength training to lose weight. Since he is under house arrest, no one will come and besides, he is bored. Although right now, he can't even sit down, but it's for the sake of defeating the evil god. If he has decided to do something, then he will definitely do it. Evening came and a rather hearty dinner was brought to his room. The maids wished him a pleasant appetite, and the guy, seeing the dishes, called her. The girl froze, and the guy remembered the incident with the bathroom. He is sure that she is still upset that he spied on her while she was taking a bath, and although he knows that he did not do it, it does not seem right. The only one he can complain to is the goddess who turned him into an orc prince. Speaking of which, she is the main god in this world. If he is not mistaken, then the main god in this world is Nerida, the goddess of water. Ten days have passed since then, how his sister and Lulu came to visit, and no one visited him after that. He had nothing to do, so he worked hard at strength training. And now, feeling his stomach, he realized that he seemed to have lost some weight. He was informed that the king was here to see him. The door opened and the king came in. The guy greeted his dear father and he said that there was something he needed to tell the guy urgently. Then Luke said that he would accept any punishment that was announced to him. The king looked at his son and said that he had violated the rules, but it is not correct to call it punishment since it is not a criminal offense. Then the guy asked what would happen to him, to which the king said that firstly, because he had lost his dragon, he was expelled from the Dragon Knights Academy on the same day. The guy thought that exile was already a done deal. Nodding, the guy, with cold sweat running down his face, said that he understood and was already ready for this. Then the king said that's why he worked to get the guy transferred from the Knight Rider Academy to the Academy of Magic. But his grade in the entrance exam to the Dragon Knights Academy is too bad. Then the king was told that Luke did not have enough points to enter the Magic Academy, so he thinks that this is too difficult a transfer. With a gloomy face, the king said that he had never been more embarrassed in his life. Annoyed, he said he couldn't tell the guy how embarrassing it was. The guy thought about what he understands, because he even had a private tutor. It seems that's why the king was so angry. At the same time, the old man said that he had no choice but to send him to the night academy, but he thought that it would be too hard for the guy with such a fat body. 
and then the king noticed that his son seemed to have lost some weight. The guy smiled and said that well, he started trying to lose weight. Folding his arms under his chest, the king said he could see, but he didn't think a little weight loss would help him at the night academy. Then the guy said that but he had to go somewhere to maintain their kind of royal family. From his words, the king, enraged, shouted that therefore his shameful behavior would remain a stain on the name of the royal family. Embarrassed, the guy looked away and asked for forgiveness. He cursed Luke inwardly because he had to apologize for him. Coughing dryly and holding himself in hand, the old man said that was why he had talked to the cabinet of ministers about what he should do. Then they gave him a very good offer and he decided that it would be right to give the guy to the neighboring kingdom as a groom. The guy didn't quite understand what the king meant. When he found out about this, it was clear to Luke why the engagement was so broken off. Turning pale in front of his eyes, the guy screamed to himself that they would give him at least a little rest. This is not the reason he came into this world. Seeing his condition, the king said in a panic that being someone's husband was not so bad. He knows the neighboring kingdom of Forl, doesn't he? He will marry and become part of the Duke of Formt's family. T. He duke has three daughters, but since his wife is ill, they cannot hope to have more children, so he decided to take a husband for his eldest daughter. And that's why Luke will study at the Faculty of Magic of the Night School. His daughter also goes to the same school, and they will get married after graduation. The pale guy said that he also has a sweetheart Lulu. The king turned his head and said that he was sure he had heard that the engagement had been cancelled. He should think about the stupid things he has done in his life. Then, he should just give up on Miss Lulu. The guy asked his father if the other kingdom knew about his behavior, and the king turned pale. In his defense, he said that the kingdom of Forl is a vassal kingdom and it obeys them. This is a small kingdom in which only a fiftieth part of the population of the king's kingdom itself lives. So that their blood does not unbalance between the aristocrats every few years, they take husbands or wives from a friendly kingdom. They are looking for blood, the highest noble family that can use magic. So far, they have only sent a husband and wife from the Count's family, but they want a husband for the Duke's family, so someone from the Count's family will not be enough. Frowning, Luke said it was because they needed a high-ranking noble son. The king will use this as an opportunity to get rid of the stupid prince. Upon hearing him, the king said that they were looking for the blood of a family with excellent magical properties, and the guy's behavior did not matter. The guy thought that Luke was indeed a direct descendant of the royal family. Moreover, his main attribute is a rare holy attribute. He's the perfect model. Realizing this, the guy felt that it smelled fried. With a stone face, he said that he thought so. And then the guy thought about it and realized that it would be more convenient for him. He will have more freedom if he does not live under his father. It doesn't seem so bad. Folding his arms under his chest, the old man said that he knew Luke was unhappy, but he had to contribute as a member of the royal family. Then he added that he knows it's unexpected, but Luke will leave early tomorrow morning. The shocked guy shuddered and was shocked, but then pulling himself together, he said that he understood, and then asked what kind of girl would be his partner. Thinking about it, the old man said that they had no information about this girl. He'll know when he gets there. This old man wanted to send his own son from the royal family, but he doesn't know any information about the princess. It looks like the king is hiding something. Nodding, the guy said that he understood, and then stretched out his hands and said that he would like to pack his luggage. So could dear father take off this magic bracelet. Raising his hand, the old man said that he would not be removed until the guy was taken to the duke, since he would immediately run away. The guy clicked at this behavior, and then two boxes appeared in front of him. The old man said that there are 100 million pennies as a devotee from the treasury, as well as 1 million pennies for him personally. The guy was surprised by such figures. Then the old man said that if the guy needed something, he could just buy it. The next morning, the first Prince Yale looked at his father with displeasure. He told his father that he didn't understand, leave without telling their family everything. The king asked Yale for understanding, because it was all for Luke's sake. Outrage, Yale waved his hand and asked what part of suddenly becoming someone's husband in a neighboring kingdom could be for Luke's sake. Seeing his attitude, Luke smiled and told his brother that everything was fine and he could calm down. Then the king said that it would take 15 days on the cart, but that it would be faster if he took him away with his dragon. Yale wanted to say something, but didn't know how to object. Then Luke added wood to Yale's flame bonfire, saying that the reason Yale was chosen to accompany him was simple. If Luke had escaped, the blame would have been placed on whoever was responsible for him. This is done in order to keep the hatch from escaping. Outrage, Yale looked at his father and asked if this was really the case. Looking away, the old man said that was the same thing, and then looked at Luke and told him not to say it, even if he was whining the truth. Licking his lips, Luke said that at least he could take revenge like that. 
coughing dryly, the old man asked for forgiveness and told them to believe him this time. Having come this far, he can't just stop. Looking at his father with displeasure, the guy thought that if he was so worried, then he shouldn't have chosen this restless boy. Chuckling, Luke asked that only his brother would guard him this way. Nodding, the king said that he had decided to leave this matter to Yale in order to keep it a secret. At the same time, Yale used the inventory and the dowry disappeared. After that, they boarded a dragon, and Luke said that if they flew on a dragon, it was unlikely that anyone would attack them. Meanwhile, Yale said that he doesn't understand what the bespectacled father is thinking this time. It's not that he doesn't like Luke, but it seems to Yale that Luke was abandoned anyway. The guy told Yale not to talk like that, because he couldn't change anything, but now he would have to work harder than before. Luke nodded at that. Some time later, they were already in the border territory of the Kingdom of Foral. The soldier greeted them and saluted, thanking them for coming. Then the soldier said they could take a break with Manson. Asking for forgiveness, Yale said that they were eating as fast as they could, so they just kept going. Nodding, the soldier said that he understood, and then wished them a safe journey. Yale nodded. At the same time, Luke was stroking the dragon's nose, and then someone called him. It was a little girl who asked him if he wanted to buy flowers. When the soldier saw the girl, he shouted that this gentleman, an aristocrat and a flower seller, should not talk to him. The girl asked for forgiveness in fright, but Luke stopped the soldier, said what a beautiful flower it was, and then asked how long they were standing. The girl said it was 50 pennies for a bunch. The guy handed over a gold coin, asked if he could buy the whole basket and asked if it would be enough. The embarrassed girl said that he had no change from the gold coin. Then the guy said that everything was fine, because he didn't need change. The girl wanted to say something, but the soldier said that the gentleman said that everything was fine, so she just had to thank him and just leave. Bowing, the girl thanked the guy for everything and said that it would help her mother recover from the injury. The surprised guy asked that her mother was injured, to which the delighted girl nodded. Then the guy turned to his brother, and he took out a potion from the inventory, and the guy smiled and thought that is expected from his dear brother. Then the guy handed the bottle to the girl and said that the ethos of kinship is to restore the average level so she can take it with her. The girl trembled and said that she could not afford such an expensive thing, to which the guy told her to just take it. The girl happily thanked them and left. Smiling, Yale said that Luke is very gentle with children, although not very popular. Annoyed, Luke said that dear brother talks too much. When they were flying across the expanses of the sky, the guy saw a crowd of people at the bottom and informed his brother about it. Yale nodded and said it looked like Luke was right, but he couldn't put Luke in danger, since he has to deliver it in one piece. Then the guy said that but the family badge on that carriage seems to belong to the royal family of Forl. Yale was worried. He said that the royal family was most likely in this carriage, and Luke said that this was not something they could turn a blind eye to as members of the royal family. Nodding, Yale said that then he would only help them this time, and in the meantime, Luke should go and hide. Then Luke anxiously asked what if something happened to Yale. They will be forced to stop and he will go with him. Yale shouted that then they should go, but then Luke broke off his epic exit, asking him to wait. Turning around, Yale said that they had to hurry, to which the guy said that he should take off this bracelet before that. With it on his wrists, there's nothing Luke can do. Yale did as he was told, and as soon as the bracelets turned off, a female voice rang in his head telling the guy that she was so glad to hear the master. The guy thought that he was also glad to hear from her, and then asked her if she could tell him about the situation right now. AI said that to be honest, it's dangerous to fight at this level, he should look at his status. The guy said the status and a new window with his status popped up in front of him. After looking at the level, he was in despair, because he was only the 18th. AI explained this by saying that since he was reincarnated, his status would be considered the same as that of a newborn. The guy clutched his head and thought that it was not surprising that he felt that he would die from just one blow. After that, he looked at the skill and realized that he seemed to have inherited them completely. There were two categories, combat skill levels and production skill levels. From combat skills, the sword and bow were at the third level, and the spear and fist at the second. From production, alchemy at the eighth, and cultivation and mixing at the seventh. The guy asked if he really needed to be at least level 10 to use magic for beginners. The guy opened the inventory and realized that it was full of restorative medicine. He handed a couple to his brother, telling him to take the medicine, because he had a lot of them in his inventory. Yale thanked his brother. The guy, looking at the bow, thought that he had been on the Kudo team for two days, so he could at least support him, probably. Nodding, he told his brother that he would help him from heaven. Nodding, Yale said that he would then hand over control to his brother and told Luke to take care of him. 
As a result, they flew towards the bandits and immediately released a wind of blades called a cutting storm. The blades of the wind immediately left many cuts in the bodies of the opponents at the same time that Yale landed on the ground. While the bandits were wondering where the dragon came from, Luke took aim and shot at two of them. Squinting, Luke thought about how he was killing people with his own hands, it was so disgusting. But nevertheless, he was amazed by the accuracy of his shots. Is there really some kind of correction system here? Suddenly, an artificial intelligence voice rang in the guy's head, saying that the master's race level had risen to 10. All the magic of beginners is unlocked. The surprised guy asked that he had the 10th level. He flew over the king's knights and used aqua healing, for which he was thanked. And then he felt discomfort. Turning around, he immediately took aim and shot at the hooded man. There was an explosion, and the hooded man, shocked by the current, fell unconscious. Meanwhile, the guy went down and undressed him. Looking at his cloak, Luke realized that this was not an ordinary bandit. At the same time, everyone started throwing weapons shouting that they were giving up and now, Luke began to use healing on everyone. Luke looked at his brother and asked if he was injured, to which he, not quite shaking off the dust, said that he had been cut, a little, but he was fine. Smiling, Yale happily said that as he thought, Luke was amazing why he was pretending to be a fool at the same time. The embarrassed guy said that he thought too highly of him. He doesn't even think he's worthy of being a knight, because his limbs are still shaking from killing. Smiling, Yale said that but he was also no different from Luke, and then the guy realized that his brother was shaking too. Then the knights came up to him and thanked the Lord Dragon Knight, because they had saved their lives. Straightening up, Yale introduced himself as the first prince of the Volga Kingdom, and then said that this was his brother. Then Luke said that he was the third son of the Volga royal family. The soldiers immediately fell to their knees and said they didn't know they were from the royal family. Then Yale explained that he was accompanying his brother, but they saw the battle going on below and decided to help. Then he asked about who is the master of this army. Then a woman began to get out of the carriage. The girl thanked Yale Sama and Luke Sama and introduced herself as the second princess of the kingdom of Foral Mia Foral. The blonde girl smiled and said that her name was Mia Foral and Luke, looking at her, thought that she was a princess whom he had never seen before. He should have seen her at least once since she is from a vassal state. Suddenly one of the girls fell, and someone said that she was one of those who guarded the carriage. The guy remembered that a knife was thrown at her, but she was already healed then, which means that she seemed to have been poisoned with poison. Luke immediately said that he had to examine her, and he was immediately allowed in. Smiling, Yale said that his brother is a healer who can use holy magic, so they can leave it to him. Luke approached the wounded woman and said that he needed one of them to help him. The armor was removed from the girl, and then the guy tore the place of clothing that was poisoned and a black trail appeared. The pale knights, girls asked what it was. The AI in the guy's head said it was poison. There are three other people infected with the same poison. The surprised guy asked what she could learn about the infected without even seeing everything, to which the AI asked her to use evaluation magic. When he used it, a new notification popped up in front of the guy, talking about the poison. It was the poison of the dark frog, a slow-acting poison that can be cured with an advanced level or higher antidote. The guy said that it was bad, and informed everyone that it was the poison of the dark frog, and although it would not kill her immediately, it was dangerous, and then asked if there was anyone here who could use advanced magic, or if they had an antidote. Taking out the bottle, one of the knights said that one of those who knew how to use advanced magic had been killed. As the commander of the knights, he has an advanced level antidote and so does she. The guy asked if his brother had an antidote, to which he said that he had two vials, but he used one. The guy nodded and said it was a wise decision. Then the captain of the knights said that he would take a mid-level antidote so that they could give others to his subordinates. Then the guy smiled and said that he had something for the captain. Annoyed, Yale said that he was just checking on the captain. Wasn't he? To which Luke said that it was because he thought that royals and the highest nobility should always have an antidote on hand. This country should be very peaceful if the princess's knights don't have it, don't they? Yale paled at his brother's words, but Luke continued, saying that these troops are worth more than an antidote. Isn't he right? The embarrassed princess said that of course she would make sure that from now on there would be enough antidotes for everyone. The guy frowned and thought that he still couldn't get rid of the feeling of discomfort. Had he missed something? Then the AI asked the wizard to use search magic. When he used it, the guy realized that it was incredible. The AI said that if he raised his level he would be able to expand the search area. There was a map in front of him, and there were different colors. The whites were people, the blues were allies, the greens were friends, the yellows were opponents, the reds were bloodthirsty, and the purples were magical beasts. The skull sign was also a trap. The guy immediately raised the search level to the third, and the area of the truth expanded. 
There was one red dot, and it looks like there's someone else here. If he could use it together with appraisal magic, it would be good. Then the AI informed him that he could reproduce the image. He should just click on the red dot. When he did click on the dot, an image of the killer appeared, and the AI reported that he had taken aim at the princess with a poisoned arrow. The guy ran towards the princess and immediately raised his shield, into which the arrow crashed. The guy immediately told the knights to take the princess to the carriage because the enemy is still here. Gale looked at the sides of the enemy and said with displeasure that they would not catch up even if they chased after him. Then Luke took out a bow from his inventory and fired three arrows that hit the enemy and his horse. The shocked soldier said that it was incredible. He had hit from such a distance. At the same time, Yale told his dragon to take the enemy alive. When the enemy was brought, Luke thanked her and handed her the carcass of a horned rabbit, which made the dragon cheer up. Outraged, Yale shouted at Luke, saying that he was constantly feeding his dragon. That's why Waltz loves Luke more than his master. Feeling awkward, the guy smiled and said that Yale was the only one Waltz loved the most. Then he asked Yale if he knew what Waltz's favorite food was, to which Yale replied that it was an orc. But that was the wrong answer, because Waltz likes goblins the most. The surprised guy asked the pet that he really liked this smelly meat the most, to which the dragon purred in love. With tears in his eyes, Yale asked why his dragon hadn't told him that. Luke said he thought the dragon master should be one of the first to know. While they were chatting, suddenly one of the knights rushed somewhere pulling out a sword. But Luke ducked right at him and knocked him down. The soldier shouted to be released, because these freaks killed his comrades, but Luke did not listen and just holding him called his brother. Yale realized what Luke wanted and opened his inventory. Soon, the knight was lying with magic bracelets in his hand. The pale captain of the knights asked them to wait, and asked why he was being handcuffed. Luke looked at that bandit sitting almost naked and said that he believes that these two are not ordinary bandits or knights. The princess bowed her head uncomprehendingly and said that she didn't really understand what was going on. The guy said that their items are too expensive and made from the best resources. Luke thought they were disguised as bandits, but their real purpose was to kill the princess. The captain asked, then, why Luke had detained this knight, because Luke said that he suspected the knight as one of the conspirators. The pale knight shouted that he was not one of them. Eel said that the recruitment of knights to protect the royal family takes place in a closed form. It is simply impossible to come and get such a position. Surely this guy was trying to kill him so that he wouldn't blurt out too much. Because usually a knight doesn't kill, but interrogates instead. Luke, looking at the knight, asked that he was one of them, and the knight said that he swears to God that he is not with them. Then the princess came up to them and joyfully said that it was good that he was not one of them. While the princes were puzzled, the princess said that she was a judge of the first class, so she actually recognizes lies. This unique skill is bestowed by the gods. In exchange for the ability to lie, the owner of the skill cannot lie. Then the guy asked the princess if she was here for some business. The girl nodded and said that tax embezzlement was taking place in the Marquesan territory. She was on her way there because she heard that their informants had captured several important witnesses. Then Luke said that killing the princess would only delay their capture. The girl smiled and said that after she was killed, it would take at least two weeks before they could negotiate with another inquisitor. Turning his head, Yale said that they were also trying to destroy the evidence during this time to which the girl said that this was most likely the case. Suddenly, there was a creepy giggle from the bound killer. Before anyone noticed him, the guy said that he didn't know what they were talking about, but he was doing it just for the money. The girl said that it seemed to be true. Then the girl told him to tell about his customer, to which the killer said that it would not work because they did not tell them who and why. Then the girl thought about it, and having come to some conclusion, she said that they would no longer receive any information from this guy. Then the killer smiled broadly, and Luke, suspecting something, immediately pulled the girl back, and taking out a dagger stabbed him right into the killer's heart. Everyone looked at the guy in a daze, and most of all, Yale was surprised, who with a pale face asked Luke what he had done. Luke, having received the information about the hanging of the level up to the 20th, smiled. The girl was also at a loss and asked what had happened. Then Luke asked if the princess was having trouble with her eyesight. The girl confusedly said that this was so, because she could barely distinguish the appearance of a person. This revelation surprised the two brothers, but the girl asked why Luke had so suddenly killed him, even though he had recently stopped their night. Luke explained that he had just remembered how easy it was to remove the magic sealing bracelet, and then he saw that guy's hand make a strange movement, and now checking, he can tell that he was right. Eel said that he had a small blowpipe in his hand, and when Luke used it, he reported that it was the poison of instant death. 
The princess turned pale from this. The surprised girl asked if the magic bracelet was so easy to break, to which the guy told the captain to put a chain on this bracelet, and he would show how he did it. When they did as he ordered, Luke said that he was now handcuffed and who had used sealing magic on the bracelet. But something will happen in the next five seconds. The guy raised his hand and started scolding until five and Yale was shocked by this. The princess, not understanding what he was talking about, asked if the prince had noticed something. Luke approached the princess and said that she had something on her shoulder and then took out a rose from there. Then Yale explained to the princess that Luke's hands should be tied behind his back, but he could raise his right hand to count and take out the flower, and then it dawned on the girl, and she gaped in shock. Lifting the handcuffs, Luke said that as they could see, it was easy to do with a single twig. Then Yale looked at Luke with a strange expression and asked what it meant that he could escape at any moment, to which the guy said that if dear father found out everything would be much more difficult. Yale said that then they should return the bracelet back to his hands, to which Luke indignantly asked what he hadn't heard. He's not going to run away, and besides, there's a princess and knights here. Not understanding what they were talking about, the princess asked why it was necessary to put a bracelet on Luke. Luke looked at his brother with displeasure, and Yale said that they couldn't hide it forever and told Mia that Luke had a habit of running away. His father instructed him to bring Luke to the duchy. The surprised girl said that Luke was running away. Laughing, the princess said that if the king gave such an order, it means that Luke does not enjoy his trust, does not it? The annoyed guy said that it was his father's fault that he chose him as a groom. He'll regret it anyway. Smiling, Mia said that Luke was amazing. Suddenly, Yale told Luke to clear the entire list of friends before putting on the bracelet. Luke understood and said that it was supposed to be to prevent espionage, to which Yale nodded. The guy did as he was told and told his brother to check. While he was doing this, a thought suddenly came to Mia's head and she asked Luke, Sama if he wanted to become her friend. The guy smiled and said that it was a great honor for him that his first girlfriend in this country was the princess herself. Feeling that the guy was not lying, the girl said that she was delighted. After that, Yale looked at the princess and she said that she needed to return to the duchy of the forest, where her uncle lived, and therefore she could hope that they would stay with her until then. Yale agreed easily, and Mia said that Duke Score's knights would arrive. And so, some time later, the Duke's knights arrived, and they all looked at Luke with malice, which made him wonder why they were looking at him like that. There was music that the minstrel was playing on his instrument. He was telling a story to a little girl with blonde hair. The story was about a pig prince from a distant country. The soldiers looked at Luke with malice in their eyes, which made him wonder and think about why they had such unkind looks. Without hesitation, he turned to his brother and asked him why the guards were looking at him like that. The guy smiled tightly at this, but turned around, frowned, and, becoming enraged, asked if they were really trying to scare his brother. They should show respect to the royal family. Turning around, Mia also asked the soldiers with displeasure about what they were allowing themselves, to which the soldiers could only smile at the beauty of the princess. But she frowned and said that it was unthinkable rudeness to behave like that towards the prince. Maybe she should execute them as rebels. Upon hearing her words, everyone fell on one knee, asked the princess for forgiveness, to which the girl said that they had not offended her. They turned to Prince Luke and asked for his sincere forgiveness. Making a face, Luke asked why he needed their ostentatious apologies. Hearing him, Yale shouted in panic that the truth teller had been found. He could just Prince raise them and be done with it. An unhappy Luke said that but he wanted to cause. Then the guy turned to the princess and asked if she would help, to which she nodded. The girl turned to Bale, the head of the squad, and asked if the guards were planning evil against the prince. Startled, the captain turned pale and said that there was nothing like that. With pitiful eyes, the girl said that didn't they know about her abilities. She immediately sees the lie and instantly recognizes the betrayal. Bending down, the commander said that they were wholeheartedly devoted to their Emilia. The guy did not understand his scream and therefore asked who Emilia was, to which all the soldiers' jaws dropped out. The stunned commander asked Prince Luke that he really did not know the name of his bride. To this, the guy squinted and said that he had been informed about his betrothed that she was the daughter of a duke and that was it. Upon hearing him, the commander was covered in cold sweat running down his face. Then Mia explained that Amelia is quite withdrawn and rarely appears in public. Nevertheless, she herself entered the faculty of magic without any problems. Sighing, the guy said that now she was engaged to him, a complete stranger. Nodding, the girl said that it was so, because her father wished it so. Frowning, Luke felt that it wasn't that simple. Then the girl explained that if Prince Yale had been the groom, no one would have said a word but rumors about Prince Luke have reached even their duchy. Of course, the guy realized what was going on and therefore turned pale, but he was wondering how they found out about him in the engagement, 
and so he asked about it. The girl said that a minstrel from the kingdom of Volga wandered into them and he told a lot of interesting things. Outrage. Yale asked if they had really allowed him to defame the royal family. The girl smiled and said that well, his ballads about the pig prince are so fascinating. Enraged, Luke shouted that his notoriety had preceded him. The girl smiled and said that they could go to the duke in her carriage. When they entered the carriage, they saw another girl there. She introduced herself as Princess Erica's personal maid, D. Francis. Then she thanked Prince Luke for saving her mistress. The guy smiled and said that it was not worth talking about it, because he was just lucky to notice the poison. Then the guy turned to the princess and asked her to tell him about Amelia. The girl nodded with a smile and said that she and her cousins. Luke sat in the carriage and sang a song about a prince from a distant country, who was being mocked, and he endured and endured. They put him in a carriage, and on the way, they are taking him, the prince, far, far away. Listening to his song, the girls laughed and the princess asked the guy about what kind of sad song it was. Did he really hate the idea of an engagement so much? The indignant guy asked the princess about how she would feel in his place. He can't accept that everything is resolved without him. Then the girl said that because of his poor eyesight, he has been considered defective since childhood, and even her ability to recognize lies. Hardly anyone sees her as a successful match. The guy said that, but you can just not lie. Besides, he finds her not only beautiful but also charming. The embarrassed girl put her hand on the pile and asked if the guy really thought that, to which Luke smiled and said that she was very nice. The girl said he wasn't lying, and she was so happy about it. The maid smiled broadly and told the lady and Prince Luke that they were about to arrive at the castle. Upon hearing this, the guy grimaced and thought that he felt sick. Mia seemed to notice this and asked the prince if he was okay, to which he sighed and said that he was fine. Hell and his brother were probably already at the castle gate. Well, the guy hopes that he will finally take off these bracelets. And so they stopped at the duke's castle and when Luke approached his brother, he asked him if he liked the trip, to which the guy nodded. The guy nodded and said that then they could go in the duke's carriage. The coachman opened the door and now the two princes are sitting opposite each other. One is thinking, the other is just sleeping. Realizing that there was nothing to do, Luke asked the navigator what had become of the girl he wanted to save, to which the AI said that news from another world was not available to her. He'd better take it to the goddess. Frowning, the guy thought that it looked like he needed to get to her temple as soon as possible. As a result, they nailed the Duke of Forest's house and now they got out of the carriage. Soon, a middle-aged man with black hair approached them and introduced himself as Duke Gale B. Forrest. Then, putting his hand on his heart, he said that first of all he would like to express his gratitude to them for saving his niece. Smiling, Yale said that they hadn't done anything special, and the Duke turned around and said that then he would introduce the others to them. Soon they went into the house, and when they entered the row, there were maids on one side and butlers on the other. Looking at these beautiful maids, Yale leaned over to Luke and told him not to spy on the maids anymore. The guy thought to himself that he hadn't thought of doing it. Soon, the duke who was walking in front opened the doors and two girls stood in front of him. One in front with her hands on her hips and with a serious look, the other behind, embarrassed by them and hiding behind her sister. Judging by her posture, the girl with a stormy temper introduced herself as Anna, the duke's second daughter. The little one, trembling, said that she was lying. The embarrassed duke told Lala to say hello, because it was inconvenient in front of the guests. She's too shy. Then the duke apologized, saying that Amelia was currently studying for exams at the academy, so she did not meet them. Then the duke said that it seemed she was also sick, so she was afraid to infect them. Eel nodded and said that they understood, so there was nothing to worry about. Then he introduced himself and said his name was Yale. But, Volg, the first prince of the kingdom of Volg, nodding, Luke said that he was the third prince. Grimacing, Anna said that this was a real pig, her poor little sister. Enraged, the duke gently hit his daughter on the head, telling her not to talk like that. Then, bowing to the princes, he asked for forgiveness for his daughter's bad manners. While Anna was complaining, Yale said she wasn't the only one. Then the duke smiled and apologized for not letting him rest, and then added that he would like to ask Prince Yale and Neef to participate in the interrogation. Then the duke said that his highness had gone to the Marquis's domain, so he needed to prepare a report on the interrogation of the robbers. The girl nodded, as did Yale, who agreed. Then the duke said that Luke could wait here, and Anna would keep him company. Of course, Anna was outraged and clearly showed it, but Luke was also unhappy. While Luke was frowning with displeasure, his guide said that it looked like Duke Gale wanted to leave him with Anna and Lala, probably wants to check how the guy will behave with them. The guy nodded, and thought that it looked like this guy didn't want to marry his daughter to just anyone, even by order of the king. 
Then the conductor said that if the rumors about the guy were confirmed, he would go for an understandable one. The guy heard this, said that he understood, and then thought about the prospect of this information. And so everyone sat down at the table, well, except for the shy Lala who was hiding behind her sister's chair. The maid, feeling the awkward and gloomy atmosphere, said she would make tea. As a result, cups of tea were placed in front of them. Feeling Annie's displeased look, the guy picked up the notebook and took out a leaf and began to fold origami. Lala, interested with a twinkle in her eyes, asked what it was, to which the guy replied that it was a wyvern. Dissatisfied, Anna folded her arms under her chest and said that it was like a dragon. She had heard that he was studying to be a horseman. Lala added that he had also killed his dragon. The guy smiled and told them to look, because he was like a living person. Anna chuckled and said that he was an idiot, it was just paper. Then the guy used light and flight, and the cranes flew. Of course, Lala liked it and she came up to the guy with a happy face and asked her to teach it too. The guy nodded and said that they would try it now, and Anna looked at her sister in shock. Some time later, the guy awkwardly scratched his head and asked where the toilet was. Lala smiled and said that she would accompany her, but at the same time the bell rang in Anna's hands and the maid immediately came up and asked if she was called. Waving her hand, Anna told Iris to take the guy to the bathroom, to which the girl nodded and asked the prince to follow her. Of course, the guy was puzzled by Anna's actions, so they left the office and started up the stairs. More precisely, the maid went up in front and Luke followed her, thinking that in this world, toilets are probably primitive everywhere, just a hole in the floor. But the guide, the artificial intelligence said that this was not the case. In this castle, the maids washed the toilet with magic. The guy nodded and asked where everything went after the spell, and the AI kindly replied, saying that they were entering another dimension the same place where his things are stored in spatial pockets. Then the conductor panicked and said that it was classified information. The owner must not tell anyone about this. The guy washed his hands and began to leave, thinking that even here there are secrets of higher beings. After the guy left, the maid came in and then came out and looked at the guy in surprise. The guy also looked at her and the maids embarrassedly asked if cleaning was required. The guy grinned and said that he had done it himself, which surprised the maid. At the same time, someone coughed and the guy asked the girl about it. The maid said it was from the mistress's room. She lay down to rest. The guide immediately informed the guy that in his world it is called tubercule, and in this world they have not yet invented a cure for it, which means it is incurable. Then the guy asked that but contagion can be removed by a magical barrier, to which the voice in the guy's head replied I agree. Then he told the maid that he wanted to talk to her mistress. From this statement, the maids turned pale and shuddered, and then asked the guy to stop, because the disease is extremely contagious. He can't go in there for anything. Then the guy said she could wait in the hallway. And so the door opened and the guy went inside, and there was a girl lying on the bed with a pale face on which there was perspiration. The girl with bags under her eyes looked up and asked who it could be. A few years ago in the castle, one of the maids asked if the others had not singled out Prince Luke, because the tutor was already beside himself with anger. Others asked if he was really skipping classes again. At the same time, in the greenhouse of the castle, the old gardener asked Master Luke if it was time for him to go to lessons, to which he said that he would rather learn from her. The old lady smiled and said that he shouldn't have said that. After all, she is a very harsh teacher. Let's go back to the present. The guy used an air stitch to enter the room, and then looking at the red and pale girl on the bed, he apologized for the intrusion, and then introduced himself as Luke. Then he also announced that he was the Duke's future son-in-law. The girl smiled and said that this was how he decided to introduce himself to her personally, how kind of him. The girl smiled and said that she was Duchess Sasha, then coughed and said that but he was at risk of infection, so he had better leave the room. Suddenly she coughed again, but this time with blood. This startled the guy, and the maid from behind, screaming, asked for forgiveness from the mistress, saying that she had warned Prince Luke. Meanwhile, the guide told Luke that medicine is poorly developed in this world, because magic treatment of diseases is difficult. The guy nodded and thought that if the magician was ignorant of medicine, then the spell would not work. The guy approached the girl and gently touched her hand, asking for forgiveness for this, and then began to apply one treatment after another, starting with aqua treatment, cleansing, and aqua recovery. He lit up brightly, and after that the guy asked the conductor if he had succeeded, to which the conductor said that he had relieved the symptoms, but the disease was already in a late stage. If the spell is repeated for 10 days in a row, the effect will be better. Meanwhile, the surprised girl said that she really felt better. The maid was also delighted to notice that she immediately blushed. The girl smiled broadly and thanked Luke and said that apparently she got a wonderful son-in-law. 
To this, the conductor happily told the guy that it looked like rumors about him had not reached the Duchess. Suddenly, the maid came forward and asked the guy if she could ask him about magic. Then, without giving him a chance to answer, she immediately asked about why he used aqua treatment, medium level, and why the other two spells. She wanted to add more questions, but the guy stopped her and told her to ask too many questions. Then the duchess smiled and said that Iris wanted to become a healer. Suddenly the door swung open and three people appeared. The angry duke, the embarrassed Yale and the princess's maid. Seeing the guy here, the duke became enraged and said that he had said that no one should be allowed to see his wife. Iris said in a panic that she had forgotten that she had called the duke, and in the meantime, the conductor informed the sweating Luke that it seemed the duke believed that he had disturbed his wife out of curiosity. Meanwhile, the duchess herself called her husband and smiled and said that Prince Luke had used healing magic and her fever had subsided and her cough had passed. Smiling, Luke said that over time he would heal her completely. When the knight heard this, he was shocked and shouted that this could not be because this disease is incurable. And only then did he realize that he had blurted out too much, because his wife had become gloomy. Then Yale asked his brother if Luke could really heal the Duchess. But the Duke was annoyed. Thinking about it, the guy said that if they give him 10 days, it should work out. Hearing this, Yale put his hand on his forehead and said that if his father had known about his abilities, maybe he would not have married him. Then the guy asked if he could leave for the academy in 10 days. Surprised, the duke asked if he really could do it. Even the holy healer couldn't handle it. Moreover, he would miss the demon summoning ceremony at the academy. Now the guy is interested. Then, sighing, Yale said that he should remember how they signed contracts with the dragons. Had he really forgotten? Then the guy asked if it was possible later, to which he was told that a certain position of the stars was needed. So the summoning circle could only be used once a year and the ceremony could not be postponed in any way. The guy nodded and said that he understood. Then the duke asked Luke what would happen if his wife's treatment was interrupted for one day so that he could go to the ceremony. The guy said that he thinks that there is nothing wrong. It is unlikely that the symptoms will worsen much. Nodding, the duke said that then he would ask the director for a few days, to which the guy nodded, and suddenly at that moment there was a long rumbling in his stomach. Everyone turned around, and then the embarrassed duchess asked for forgiveness, clutching her cheeks and saying that this was cold. While the duke looked at his wife in disbelief, Luke smiled and said that her appetite had woken up. The girl said that she hadn't eaten much lately. Suddenly, something clicked in the duke's head, and he asked Prince Yale and sweet Luke if they were against dinner. While Luke was perplexed by the prefix cute, Yale smiled and said that in no case would they be happy. Then the guy asked the duchy if she would like to join, at least for a short time because Lala missed her very much. Of course, the woman also missed the children, but she was in doubt. Of course, the guy understood her fear, and therefore calmed her down by saying that he would make a magic barrier, and then no one would be able to get infected. The duchess asked that there really would be no danger, to which the guy nodded. Then the duchess thought about it, but still decided, and with a twinkle in her eyes said that if everything was like that, then she would like to see her daughters. Smiling, Luke said that then they would do so. Then the guy thoughtfully said that he needed a light and nutritious meal, and then asked the duke if they had rice. Nodding, the duke said that it was there, but he had heard that it was bad for the stomach. Then the guy realized that the basis of the local cuisine is baking, and when they have a cold they eat soup. The guy asked the duke if he could manage the kitchen. Of course, Yale heard it too, and immediately rushed to his brother, shouted asking what he was talking about. He's a prince, what kind of kitchen does he need? Luke indignantly said that he wanted to cook a meal that would help restore his strength. Of course, the duke was touched that Luke wanted to cook food useful for his Sasha, and therefore he immediately allowed the sweet Luke to manage the kitchen. The guy went and told the duchess that when everything was ready, he would call them, and she could rest for now. That's how they all left the room. After that, the guy used cleaning on everyone. With a twinkle in her eyes, Iris asked why he used this spell, to which the guy smiled and said that it was to destroy germs not visible to the eye. When the duke coughed dryly, Iris turned pale and asked Luke that he was going to the kitchen. After all, she decided to accompany him. Looking around, the guy saw the meat and asked what kind of meat it was, to which he was told that it was wild buffalo meat. The guide kindly said that this is very expensive meat, and it is considered delicious here. Looking around, the guy found the right ingredients, and said that he had come up with the menu, and then began to cut the meat into small cultivations of juice, to which the cook of course reacted, saying that it was such a waste. After that, the guy made cutlets from meat and other ingredients, and then cooked the sauce. They were cutlets with demiglas sauce, and when the chef saw this creation, they were shocked. 
Next, the guy continued his business with another dish, namely risotto with tomatoes. After trying it, the guy thought that it was not bad, but soy sauce would not hurt. After that, the guy showed the chefs how to do it and told them to bake, just like the first one, and then you can serve it. He explained that the little ones were there for the hostess. Smaller portions should be made for the duchess. All the chefs, of course, already respected this guy and therefore stood still and accepted his orders. After that, the guy went to the duchess's room and asked her if she was too tired, to which she smiled and shook her head. After that, the guy put an air shield on her and then said that if she got tired, she should immediately step into the room. Smiling, the girl said that she would only sit at the table so he could not worry. And so it was. Anna and Lala were sitting in front of the table and they both jumped off their seats when they saw my mother. They immediately wanted to rush at their mother, but Luke immediately stopped them. Of course, the two were surprised and Anna was generally outraged. Then Luke explained that he needed to cast a spell on them first, too. Said and done. After that, he let them go and they both went up to their mother and hugged her, and of course she did the same. Some time later, all the dishes that Luke had taught the chefs were served on the table. Smiling, he said that he had prepared light and nutritious meals for them, so they could eat slowly. Lala, with a twinkle in her eyes, said that it smelled delicious, to which the duchess nodded and happily said that it really looked delicious. The embarrassed princess said that she would also like to try what Prince Luke had prepared. The embarrassed duke asked if there was a sweet Luke for him because he would not refuse a dish either. The guy said that they had prepared with a reserve, so if they wish, they will get everything now. When the girls tasted this splendor, they were all so satisfied with the taste that they blushed. Then the duke asked with interest that this was really a traditional dish of the Volga kingdom, to which he shook his head. Then Yale said that it was just Luke who made trips to the kitchen at night and cooked himself goodies. Of course, the guy didn't like it and he looked at his brother with displeasure. And when the princess smiled and said that's where Prince Luke got all the extra, he froze in shock. Some time later, the duke asked his wife how she was feeling, to which she smiled and said that she felt fine, as if she had not been ill at all. Upon hearing this, Luke told her to be careful, because this is still a temporary effect. Medium-level magic can't cure the disease right away. Worried, Lala asked what it meant that her mother was still ill. When the guy sat down back at the table, the duchess looked at him and said that several of her maids had become infected while caring for her, could he also examine them? The guy nodded, but suddenly the duke shouted that he, of course, understood his wife, but it was also impossible. Luke wondered why this couldn't be done and said that the inspection wouldn't bother anyone and wouldn't take much time. The duke shook his head and said that this was not the case and fell silent. Instead, the conductor explained to the guy, saying that the servants are the property of this family. If the aristocrat treats the maids, the duke's reputation will suffer. The guy narrowed his eyes and thought that this was just nonsense, to which the conductor said that. Nevertheless, the duke was confused. Then the guy said that the maids could be sick, even if there are no symptoms yet, so everyone in the mansion needs to be checked. Of course, this was not permissible for the duke, and he did not even know what to say. But the duchess was grateful to the prince and said about it. The guy smiled and said that she could just call him Luke because they would soon become a family. The duchess nodded and smiled, saying that this was true, and calling him just Luke. While the princess was puzzled by something, Luke shrank from this joke. Then the conductor told the guy that Mia seemed to look at the guy from a new perspective, to which the guy thought, oh, that he hoped he made a good impression. Then Yale asked the guy how he would understand whether they were infected or not, to which the guy said that he had a skill similar to an analysis spell. Hearing this, Yale said that there is such a skill. It seems that his father clearly underestimated Luke. He is much more capable than Yale. The guy smiled and told his brother that he clearly overestimated Luke. Then the guy said that he could at least examine those present. When the Duke and Duchess nodded, the guy called Lala, and she joyfully trudged towards him. Touched by her cuteness, the guy used state analysis, but the guide said that his skills were not enough and he should increase the level by one step. He did this and repeated the skill. The guy smiled and said that Lala was completely healthy and he didn't find anything. Everyone went through the test and the guy settled on Duke Guile, saying that there was an infection, but he was not sick. This made the Duke shudder, and the guy explained that a seasoned person has a strong immune system. It can defeat the infection before it starts to spread. The pale duke said that he understood, and then said not to be frightened like that again. After that, they went to the sick room, and when the duke entered, the three sick maids immediately stood up. Meanwhile, Luke had already approached one and used aqua, treatment, cleansing and aqua, restoration and the girl immediately felt better. After this repetition of actions, the guy stopped in front of one and said that he had cured two, and she would need treatment, but she need not worry. 
Then the other one told the doctor that she had heard that their illness was incurable. The guy smiled and said that they would get better. Then he turned to the already enlarged ones and told them to take care of the patient and the duchess. The two nodded happily, of course. They all thanked the duke, but he bowed his head and said that they needed to thank not him, but his future son-in-law. Leaving the room, the duke thanked Prince Luke and said that he probably wouldn't mind a hot bath, would he? The guy nodded and soon went to take a bath. When he entered Yale was already there and when he entered the warm bath Yale began to come out. Then the guy asked if he was really leaving, to which Yale said that he still needed to write a report. Looking at him with pity, the guy nodded. Suddenly the door to the baths opened and cheerful Lala shouted that she wanted to swim with her brother Luke. Seeing him, the guy thought it was probably awkward. Meanwhile, the maid, turning pale, asked the prince for a petition, saying that she tried to accommodate, but nothing worked. It was Lala's maid. The guy, seeing her condition, said that there was nothing wrong. In the meantime, the guide said that he could let Lala into the bathhouse. Then Lala, looking at the guy with puppy eyes, asked if she couldn't come in, to which the guy smiled and said that of course she could. While the girl was happy, the maid was embarrassed and said that it was in vain that Prince Luke was allowing her to do this. Then Luke said that he also had a little sister and they always went to the bath together. Bowing, the maid said that she would then entrust the little mistress to his care and left the bath. So the two began to sing. Lala started and Luke picked it up. When the guy croaked like in the song, the girl indignantly said that frogs croak differently, and even showed how. Laughing, Luke said that this croaking doesn't look like it at all. The maid sat outside the doors and joyfully listened to the laughter of their mistress. When it was all over, the maids came in and bowed and thanked Luke, saying that she had not seen the mistress so cheerful for a long time. Then she said that she was ordered to tell him that the duke was waiting for him. The guy nodded and after the bath went to the duke. Soon he was sitting in a richly furnished room. When they sat down, the duke thanked Luke for taking care of Lala, to which Yale said that Luke was just used to communicating with their sister Lulu. Looking at his brother as a traitor, the guy told the duke that communicating with Lala was not a burden to him. Then the duke said that he called them to discuss who would accompany Luke to the academy. Luke didn't understand, and Yale explained that at the Dragon Academy, accompaniment was not required. Where did this new rule come from? Because all of Luke's peers go to study alone. The guy nodded and said that he didn't need a supervisor. Of course, the duke objected and then Luke asked if he really wanted to follow him. When Yale shouted at Luke indignant at his straightforwardness, the duke said that he was not far from the truth. He thought that given his previous behavior, a reliable person would not be placed nearby. Then Yale said that he also agreed with the duke because he was also worried about Luke. The indignant guy shouted that he did not need an escort. Suddenly the maids asked for forgiveness for interfering in their conversation and said that they would allow her to accompany the prince. Luke looked at her without understanding, and Yale with puzzlement. But the duke felt strange. Then the duke said that she probably wanted to get closer to his family. The girl did not understand, and the duke said that Luke was his future son-in-law. If she goes with him, everyone will think that she is their relative. Of course, Luke, who was left on board, was very indignant and asked whether anyone cares about his opinion. Then the maids asked Prince Luke for forgiveness and bowed in a curtsy, introducing herself as Iris D. Michael, eldest daughter of Count Michael. Then the Duke said that maybe she was looking for a way to become related to the Duke's family, to which the girl said that this was not so. And then, looking at the floor in embarrassment, she said that she only wanted to learn healing from Prince Luke. She didn't think it would be inappropriate. The guy thought about it and thought about it, that the escort would interfere with his plans. Then Yale said that if there was a beautiful girl next to Luke, he would not vouch for him. Of course, this was a detrimental blow for Luke, who looked angrily at his brother. The Duke, meanwhile, looking away, said that it was already late, so they should postpone the conversation. Alone in the room, in the dark, the guy was thinking that he couldn't sleep and it was all because of his conversation with the Duke. Suddenly his door opened and Lala, halfway in with the teddy bear in her classroom, asked if brother Luke was going to sleep. The guy looked at her in surprise and Luke came in and said that she couldn't sleep, and the guy smiled and said that then they could fight insomnia together. The girl nodded happily and climbed onto the bed. As they slept, the guy smelled the scent of sweet flowers. Then he asked whether in this world all people really have their own smell. The guide said that this is so, and the smell reflects the character. A bad person cannot smell nice. Then the guy smiled and said that Lala smelled like flowers, to which she smiled and said that he also smelled something delicious. Hearing this, the guy's heart seemed to lighten. The next morning the princess was leaving for the capital, and therefore she was seen off. Before leaving, she thanked Yale and Luke for everything and said that she was heading to the capital. 
Gale nodded and said that tomorrow he would take Luke to the Academy, and they should be careful along the way. Some time later at the Night Academy, Gale sighed and told Luke that he was not very impressive. Luke. At the same time, Luke was dying of fatigue, sitting on the ground and breathing heavily. Looking at him, Yale said that the problem was still the same. Annoyed, Yale told the guy to train more to lose weight, so he must run 10 more laps. Of course, the guy plaintively shouted that not this. Some time later they were already standing in the Duke's office. The Duke said that his brother also ordered the guy to find an escort, so he is in doubt. The guy sighed and said that he would accept any decision he made. Then Iris came into the office. She made a serious face and said that she would again ask to be appointed as an accompanying person. She wanted to learn healing from the prince. The guy looked at her skeptically and asked that she wanted to go with him, despite the rumors, of her own free will, to which the girl screamed all red that she herself had decided. Then she said that she had been the Duke's daughter's companion at the Knights Academy for three years. She never fell below fifth place in academic performance. She knows how to cook, so she asks again to appoint her as an accompanying person. At the same time, the guy's guide told him that, apparently, she would not mind becoming his concubine if necessary. Even if she is later fired, Iris wants to become a healer and benefit people. Hearing this, the guy thought that this is determination. The guide continued, saying that Iris's father probably wants Iris to have a profitable marriage, but she has good intentions anyway. Wouldn't it be better to have her next to the guy than the royal informer? Having made up his mind, the guy told the duke to grant Iris's request. The guy looked at the duke and said that Amelia is very reserved, right? But he insisted on the engagement. To this the duke said that in fact it was his eldest brother, that is, the decision was made by the king. He has no heir, and then there is the illness of his wife. The brother chose a groom for his daughter. The guy looked at the duke with suspicion and said that he had chosen a pig, a prince from a neighboring country. Why did he then agree? To which the duke said that if the rumors were true, he was ready to drive him away. But he conquered Lala in an instant, and her special skill is recognizing bad intentions. The duke trusted his daughter's abilities more than rumors. The guy was surprised by what the duke said, but the latter had not finished yet and he said that Luke Guy should understand. No, he is aware of his task. The guy said that he meant to provide the dukedom with heirs. Nodding, the duke said that, however, his brother wanted more. In their country, magical abilities are rare, but the guy has it. Therefore, he is expected to have at least 10 children. Then the duke added that it was assumed that he would marry Anna and Lala too. Hearing this, the guy frowned and thought that for them he was like a breeding bull or something. Then the duke said that Iris also has abilities, so she can accompany Prince Luke, but only if she becomes his concubine. The indignant guy shouted that the offspring were his responsibility, or something. The embarrassed girl said that in a couple of years she wouldn't care who she would marry, so she'd better choose Prince Luke, because at least she liked him. The surprised guy asked if she liked guys who were rounder or something, to which the girl, embarrassed, shouted that there was nothing like that, she would make him lose weight. Thus, Iris became his companion. The next morning, everyone accompanied Prince Luke, Prince Yale, and the maid Iris. Luke thanked his brother for agreeing to give him a ride. Iris also thanked the prince, and he smiled and said that it was not difficult for him. The duke looked at the prince and told him to treat Amelia with understanding, to which Luke said that, knowing about her shyness, he would try to be gentler. Nodding, the duke said that he would be obliged for this. The guy said that he would take part in the ceremony and return here on Saturday. When the Duchess's treatment is completed, she will begin her studies at the academy. The guy thought that of course he would try to heal the duke, but he does not want to become a breeding bull. He did not like the local order, but there was nowhere to run because there were not the most flattering rumors about him. Before leaving, Lala called her brother and asked him to come back soon. In three years of study, he must change everything at all costs. Some time later they were already at the academy. Rubbing himself against the dragon's forehead, Luke told Waltz that she was smart. He brought three people at once. The dragon purred, but Yale, who didn't like it, just chuckled and said that four people had already ridden it. Luke was stunned by his words, and then turning to the dragon he told him that he had grabbed him something tasty so he could help himself. Hearing this, Yale shouted that he was spoiling Waltz again. This was his dragon. Then the guy asked what Yale would do next, to which he said that tomorrow the king would return to the palace, and he would stay in the capital for a day. After an audience with the king, he will then fly home. So he's saying goodbye to Luke now. Luke nodded and said that's how it is and then he said to his brother that if he could tell Lula and Tilula his apologies for leaving without saying goodbye. Then Yale asked if Luke really missed Luluthia. They seemed to love each other very much. With a chuckle, Luke said that he was not talking like the heir to the throne. Yale said that of course he will inherit the kingdom, but, first of all, he is a brother, 
and does not want to watch Luke suffer from love. At these words, he shone so brightly that Luke even went blind from all this care. Looking away, the guy said that he heard that Lulu was already engaged to the son of the Marquis. Then Yale said that he would put an end to these rumors when he made her guess. She is still free. The surprised guy told his brother that this means that Yale is in love with Lulu. And then the guy said that he didn't think it was mutual, and Yale had never shown his feelings. Then Yale, embarrassed, said that he would tell it in confidence. When he heard his brother's story, he was stunned. It turned out that he was in love with Aunt Karina, and even mutually. Aunt Karina was the youngest of her father's sisters, she was not yet 30. She was forced into marriage, but on the very first day she beat her husband half to death and returned home. The embarrassed guy said that it would take his father several years to convince his grandfather, and until then, he would be engaged to Lulu. Then the guy asked what Luke was thinking. Sighing, the guy thought that his feelings for Lulu no longer cared about him, so he told his brother that he didn't think anything. Seeing this, Yale said what humility this is, and then he will not regret it. Then the guy said that he could handle his desires himself. After that, the maids told him that Waltz was settled in the hotel, and they went for a walk. While they were walking, the guy asked Iris about what they would do. Then the girl said that she wanted to buy some things and there were several good shops not far away. And now they were inside this store and while the girl was looking at the menu, the guy walked away and began to look at something else. When she saw that the guy was taking away the groceries, she screamed at him to put the groceries back. Because no matter how much he bought, he still wouldn't get more than the allotted portion. The guy, shuddering, turned to the girl and told her not to call him Prince anymore. The girl also quietly whispered that then she should call him Mr. Luke. And after shopping, they went to the living room, which was so huge that by the time he reached his room, the guy could hardly stand on his own two feet. Breathing heavily, the guy said that it would be better if they lived on the first floor. Then the girl said that they were placed on the fourth floor for safety reasons. Only aristocrats can go up here. In addition, extra physical activity will not hurt the prince. Entering the bathroom, the guy opened the wash basin and said that it looked like there was hot water. Nodding, Iris said that all this was thanks to the magical water supply. Although it is very economical, it is also very convenient. You just need to change the magic stones in time, which turn into bones. Then the girl opened something and said that they also have a refrigerated cabinet to store food. Isn't that great? Now she is putting her shopping in it. After that, the guy sat down at the sofa and they brought him a cup of tea. While drinking tea, the guy smiled and said that she was probably tired, so she could rest in her room. The girl nodded and thanked Luke and then put a bell in front of him and said that if he needed her, he could ring this bell. The guy lay down on the sofa and started looking at his status window. He had five special abilities, but it was better that no one knew that the goddess gave him these skills. Then a voice was heard in the guy's head, saying that magic was good for the guy, that it was natural that he came here from another world. The guy looked at some characteristic with tears and said that he flew by. In these skills, the level is average. Then he thought about which skill is the most useful. Then the guide said that of course this is an increase in strength. At level 10 you can even enter superhuman mode. Then the guide said that a sharp increase in strength harms the body, so for now he should not increase it above the 5th level. With an 8th level in fencing and a 10th in monastic magic, he would be on par with the rest of the students. And then evening came and finally the guy had sumptuous dishes in front of him. Iris smiled and said that dinner is ready, so she hopes that the gentleman will like it. The guy, looking at this magnificence, thought that it looked delicious. Then, seeing that everything was empty on the other side, the guy asked Iris how she was, to which Iris said that servants always eat after the master. The surprised guy said that then she wouldn't have time to have lunch. Then she said that the lunch break here was an hour and a half, so she would have time. Then the guy said that he didn't want her to get sick, so they would eat at the same time when they were alone. The girl smiled happily and thanked the gentleman for his care. And while they were drinking tea, Iris, with embarrassment, said that there would be no exams tomorrow, and therefore did not want the gentleman to meet with Amelia. The guy chuckled and said that he should go to her, even though Luke was a prince and she was the daughter of a duke. Hearing him, the girl shuddered and screamed that this was such rudeness. It is impolite to force Mistress Amelia to come. Nodding, the guy said that it was so, and it was unlikely that she would come, Given her reticence, then she should tell her maid that they had arrived. Moreover, there is no need to observe formalities, and they can simply meet in class. The surprised girl said that he was not at all what they said about him. Then the guy asked if he could visit the temple tomorrow, to which the girl nodded. The imperial family said that she would see him off. The guy refused and said that he would go there alone. And this, of course, awakened the girl's caution and she said that this was impossible. The duke ordered her to follow him relentlessly for the first time. 
If he runs away, she will be punished for it. Frowning, the guy thought about what kind of news this was. Then the guy said that then he offered to discuss their conditions for the duration of their studies. The girl bowed her head, and the guy, after taking a sip of tea, said that he had three of them. The guy said that his first condition is his diet. It should not consist of rice and flour, but of vegetables and meat. The second condition is taking a hot bath and the third is doing sports in the mornings and evenings. The girl asked what he was going to do in the morning. While the guy was wondering what she was talking about, the conductor explained to him that she was asking because Iris needed to prepare breakfast. And besides, she did not want to let him go alone. The guy looked at Iris doubtfully and said that he wanted to go out for a walk. The girl said that then they would go together. We'll be out at 6 o'clock, and then 30 minutes of light charging should be enough. Having heard this, the guy thought that at this rate, he would never improve. Then the girl raised five fingers and said that she had five conditions. He will actively lose weight. He will only eat what she cooks. She must always know where he is. He must study diligently and he will teach her, even if only a little. The guy nodded at this. After that, he took a bath and, relaxing, said that it was good that the room had a large bathroom. He can wash himself every day. Then the guide told him that this was a real privilege. Although the magic stones are worth nothing here, the bath itself is a luxury item here. When he came out of the bath, he told Iris to take a bath until the water cooled down, and she, shuddering, looked at him slightly, and then said that she was obeying and ran into the bath. The guy didn't understand her reaction. Then the conductor asked him what he should do, to which the guy asked what he was talking about, to which the conductor said that Iris thought that he would spy on her, so she washed in a hurry. The indignant guy shouted that he would not peep. Then, while drinking water, I thought that she herself had volunteered to accompany him, to which the guide said that it was because she wanted to become his student. When the duke realized that Iris's family had healing magic, he granted them lands and a new title. However, it takes a lot of money to maintain the estate. Apparently that's why Iris's father decided to marry off his daughters. The guy sighed. I thought that it seems that thanks to their abilities, marriages have become profitable. And just when he was thinking about his own things, a girl came into the kitchen. Looking at her, the guy smiled and said how fast she was. She could have taken a longer bath. The girl shook her head and thanked him for leaving her some hot water. And then, red as a lobster, she first asked for forgiveness, and then asked why he didn't peep. The guy looked at her blankly. Then the girl, with her head spinning, asked if she was really not attractive enough or not his type. She was afraid that he would peep or even start pestering her. The guy sighed and asked Iris if she was attracted to him. But the girl blushed, and then the guy said that he would never touch a girl he didn't like. Then the guy explained that before he was often accused of things he had not done, and he began to spy on the maids who slandered him, simply because they were waiting for it. The shocked girl said that she thought that he didn't care about gossip and rumors, to which the guy irritably said that of course he had things to do. After that, the guy pointed his finger at the girl and told her not to sell herself for cheap, to which she irritably said that she wasn't selling. And then, clenching her fists, she indignantly said that many guys had approached her, but she had rejected them all. It's very expensive. The guy seeing this asked for forgiveness. Then, waving his hand, the guy said that she need not be afraid of him. Without her consent, he will not touch her. The girl blushed and said that he surprised her very much. She must admit that her sympathy for him is growing. Then, hesitating, she said that, nevertheless, she was not ready for a close relationship. Laughing, the guy said that that's why he wouldn't touch her. Then she said that he should consider that she could not bear it if he rejected him when she was ready. Sighing, the guy could only think about how complicated girls are. First morning in the hostel, Iris opened the curtains and bright light poured into the room causing the guy to wake up. The girl smiled and wished Luke good morning and said that they needed to go for a walk. The guy, with difficulty opening his eyes, stood up to the prince of the imperial family about what time it was, to which the girl said that it was half past six and he had half an hour to get ready. Yawning, the guy said that on the weekend it was possible not to get up so early. A girl with a gloomy face asked about that and what time he planned to get up, to which the guy said that he only wanted to go to the temple today. Then the observer told him that Iris woke up at half past five to prepare him breakfast. Maybe he should go for a walk with her after all. The guy, surprised that she woke up so early, looked at the girl, who turned around and asked if the gentleman wanted to sleep. The guy shook his head and said that he was already getting up. The guy, while getting dressed, said that it would probably be very difficult for her to get up in such a wound, to which the guide said that this was not entirely correct. Although devices for light magic are not too expensive, not everyone can afford them. Poor people are used to getting up early, Iris also goes to bed at 10 o'clock. 
Then the guy said that after breakfast they could go to the temple, and Iris asked if it was too early to go to the temple. Then she asked if the guy wanted to visit the morning market. The guy was educated and became interested, because he said that this was a great idea. And now they were already in the bazaar and looking around. The guy said how delicious it smells here. Smelling the smell, the girl said that it was fried boar meat, and the guy couldn't have it. This is a diet, no fast food. The guy forced a smile and said okay then. Although he agreed, he was still drooling over the local food. Seeing this, the girl took pity and said that so be it, they could eat one thing at a time on the go. Of course, the guy was surprised by this, but happy as was the seller. At the same time, the guide, in a mocking voice, said that there was a lot of delicious food here. I wish I could be left unattended and eat my fill, isn't that so? The guy became gloomy and said that, by the way, this is very cruel. After that, the guy, eating the kebab, said how delicious it was. The girl said that apparently it was marinated in sake. Nodding, the guy said that they guessed right. They marinate the meat in sake all night. Isn't it good? The girl smiled and said that it was so. And so they reached the temple. When they entered, they were greeted by a nun, who greeted Iris. Iris, in turn, curtsied and also said hello. The guy said that they came to perform the communion ceremony, and he would also like to pray alone. The girl, closing her eyes, said that unfortunately he could not stay in the prayer hall alone, and that a donation must be made for the ceremony. The guy put two bags filled with gold on the spot and while the girl looked at the bags with bulging eyes, the guy told her to give half of them to the hospital, and the other to the church orphanage. Surprised, Iris said that 10,000 was enough, to which the guy said that he knew the amount, but he was donating not to the temple, but to an orphanage and a hospital. Iris asked for forgiveness, but the guy shook his head and said that he was grateful for her advice. Meanwhile, the nun came to her senses and ran somewhere, asking them to wait a little. Some time later, a priest in white approached them and asked forgiveness for keeping them waiting. Iris, seeing him, sat down and made a prayer gesture, but the guy did not flinch. Then the old man, placing his hand on his chest, introduced himself as Mars and the pontiff of this country. The guy asked the guy what kind of pontiff he was, and she explained that in this world nuns and one pontiff are considered the servants of the goddess. The pontiff thanked the guy for such a generous donation to good causes. Then he said that he came accompanied by Iris but he was seeing him for the first time. Where is he from and what is his name? The guy said that he is the third prince of the kingdom of Volg and his name is Luca Volg. The surprised pontiff said that this is what they told him about him. Then the man turned to the nun and asked her to call her. Some time later, an old woman appeared in the same white robe and told Mr. Luke that she was Mother Natasha. She heard about him from the most holy area from the kingdom of Volga. The surprised guy remembered the pretty holy area and asked his mother that she knew her. Then the guy asked her if he could convey the holy message through her. When he was sent here, he did not have time to contact her. The woman nodded and said that she would do it. In the kingdom of Volg, he studied from prepared healing potions. He grew and sold medicinal herbs, and he donated half of the proceeds to an orphanage, and that's when he and Arya became close. Then the guy asked if he could use the prayer hall. Then the pontiff said that there were no visitors now, so he thought it was possible. And standing right in the prayer hall, the guy called out to the goddess, and then the embarrassed girl asked the guy for an apology. Then the guy said that he had a lot to ask her, to which she smiled and asked for forgiveness for what she had not said earlier, but she heard all his desires. Raising one eyebrow, the guy frowned and thought about what he now understood. She could look into his soul, and he didn't even know about it. The guy mentally said that it seemed that events were now developing differently than she had planned to which the girl nodded and said that she did not expect that his dragon would die and that he would be sent to another country. The guy asked if she had saved that girl and she said yes. Then she said that she and his younger sister made a big splash on television. The stunned guy asked why this was so and then the goddess decided to tell him. After that plane crash, various channels released programs with titles like Flying Girl and Flying Squirrel Rescue Suit. The letter he sent to his sister did not seem to go unnoticed. His uncle began releasing food in the form of a flying squirrel. The girl starred in an advertisement for flying squirrel pajamas, and as a result, sales skyrocketed. The guy smiled and said that everything was fine with her. After this, the guy asked why he was so fat. Did she really want him to lose weight diligently? He was sent to another country, and now how can he fight against its evil god? Taking a breath, the girl said that his anger was understandable, so first she would fulfill any of his wishes. The guy raised his head and said that he wanted an online ordering system. The girl turned pale and said that it was impossible, to which the guy said that she said that she would do everything possible. 
to which the girl said that it was not in her power. Although she can control the resources of this world by choosing it to be reborn, she broke some rules. But she may offer a replacement. She can give Nabai access to information from his world. The guy asked who Nabai was and a voice in his head responded. Nabai said that the goddess called her that, but she would prefer to receive the name from the owner. The guy, feeling awkward, asked her for an apology, and then he said that although Nabai was a good name for his taste. Joyful, Nabai said that if the owner likes it, then it suits her too. Then the guy asked why he needed data from another world. Then the goddess said that she would create a workshop for Luke. She also taught him how to make his own homunculus. He will work in the workshop instead of himself. The guy said that then the workshop could be divided. Sake making, armory, soy sauce, dashi, kitchen and all that stuff. The girl said that Nabai will find information on how to prepare soy sauce and the homunculus will do the work. The guy said that probably with the help of magic the cooking time could be reduced. The girl happily said that she hadn't even thought about it, Luke was really great. However, she didn't expect anything else from him. The goddess said what it means to create materials. The guy nodded and ordered Nabai to find information in another world on how to make soy sauce, shampoo and medicine. Nabai said that everything would be done now and the goddess said that the equipment for the workshop would be waiting in the spatial pocket. In return, he must defeat the evil god. The guy nodded, and then told Nabai that he was entrusting the workshop to her. Nabai hummingly said that she likes everything, so she will do everything. Then she asked if she could start right away, to which the guy nodded. Then the guy said that but first there were negotiations waiting for him and turning to Iris he asked for forgiveness for making him wait. The girl shook her head at the imperial family and that she had been praying all the time, so there was nothing wrong with that. Then the guy said that he had a request for Iris and then she asked what it was. Suddenly a voice appeared in the girl's head and told her that the goddess would speak to her. Turning pale, the girl grabbed her head and screamed, asking what it was and what was going on. The guy told her not to be afraid, because it was the voice of Nereid. Then in her head they asked her for forgiveness for scaring her, and then Nereid said that she had a personal request for Iris. The fact is that she gave Luke a special assignment and she wants Duke Guile not to find out about anything. The surprised girl asked what this was her request. Then Nereid said that it would be possible to tell the Duke when Luke allowed. Then she said that the Duke ordered Iris to report Luke's every move. Then Luke said that well, Iris can just dose out the information. To fulfill the goddess's instructions, he needs to improve quickly and sometimes she will get into trouble because of this. The girl said that the duke would definitely not be happy about the troubles. After all, he expects that after studying, the guy will produce offspring. The guy said that this is a problem, because they cannot tell the duke the truth, because he will demand details. He will want to find out what kind of assignment Nereid gave and will ask Miefa to check if they are lying. The guy said that he didn't like it either, but now there was no way he could open up to the duke. He promises that in return he will teach her healing. Then the guy asked if she agreed. With tears in her eyes, the girl fell to the ground and said that she was a simple servant and did not dare refuse the goddess. Hearing her voice is already happiness for her. She will not tell the duke about it and will not convey it to him. Just allow Mr. Luke. Then Nabai explained to the guy that even the pontiff, during the entire period of his service, will only hear the voice of the goddess a few times and therefore Iris understands that she has been honored. The goddess thanked Iris and said that in gratitude she would grant her her blessing. Now she will be able to master high-level healing magic. The girl lit up, and then, with tears in her eyes, thanked Nereid. Of course she was happy. After that, the guy went into the store and told the seller to give him 10 kilograms of beans. While the seller was stunned, the maid asked why he needed so much. He must refrain from unnecessary expenditure. The duke keeps track of what he spends his money on. The guy grinned and thought that this was a financial advisor for him. Nabai said that she clearly believed that the goddess had entrusted him to her care. Iris intends to protect him at any cost. The guy, having heard the explanation, approached the girl and said that one of the abilities given to him by the goddess was time management inside a spatial pocket. The stunned girl grabbed her mouth and said that only a few people own this. The girl became interested and she asked what the other skills were, to which the guy said that he couldn't say about other skills, but this one should be kept secret. The girl nodded resolutely, and the seller, seeing their quarrel, asked whether they would buy it or not. The guy smiled and said that she shouldn't worry, because the beans would remain fresh. The girl nodded, and then said that he shouldn't cook them secretly and eat them, to which the guy said that he knows. On the eve of Mia's departure from the duke's house, then Luke wished the princess good night and she answered the same with a smile. But when she returned to her room and sat down on the bed, she felt like her heart was about to jump out of her chest. He saved her life and helped Erica. He said she was attractive and that he was a great cook. 
He also plays the piano very well. Sighing, the princess raised her head and asked Erica what she saw while she was interrogating, to which she said that Mr. Luke was very kind. He even quickly found a common language with Lala. Then she handed the princess the portrait they made today, for which the girl thanked the maid. With the help of crystal plates, images can be transmitted and even she, despite poor eyesight, can see the picture. While the girl was looking at the picture, the maid smiled and said that she needed to rest, because they were leaving early in the morning, to which the girl nodded, touching the picture. Having settled down, she looked at the picture and said with a blush that he was handsome. The next morning, when they were riding in a carriage, her maid and part-time friend asked the princess that it was really Prince Luke who was to blame for the fact that cats were scratching the princess's soul. From this, Mia, embarrassed, turned around sharply, and then Erica asked the lady about that hour that she had not fallen in love. After she returned home, lying in her chambers, she did not know peace from the beating of her heart. Hugging a pillow, the girl wondered if this was really love. Suddenly the ball vibrated, and she jumped up sharply with excitement and looked at the screen that soon appeared. Her whole face was red, and the girl on the screen said that she needed advice. Let's go back to ours. In the morning, as always, the maid woke him up and wished Mr. Luke good morning, and said that today was the first day of school, and first they should go for a walk. And while they were walking to the academy after the walk, the girl nervously looked around and noticing this, Luke asked Iris if she was really nervous. The girl nodded embarrassedly and said that it was so. The newcomers are already noticeable and she is also three years older than the other students. In addition, she accompanies the prince, so she will definitely be looked at with curiosity. Then she looked at the prince and said that he seemed completely calm. The guy grinned and said that not really. He's worried too. In addition, Amelia did not want to meet him, so he is slightly saddened. Iris, hearing this, thought about it and said that, to be honest, she also did not often meet with Mrs. Amelia. She doesn't even go to dinner parties. The surprise guy asked that she was very reserved, to which Iris shook her head and said that she had heard that she was friends with other girls and at dinners, someone was constantly trying to woo someone, so here she is and stopped visiting them. They soon reached the training building and when they entered they met a young guy with slicked back hair who introduced himself as Eric and said that he would be their mentor. Luke and Iris greeted their future mentor. After that, Eric told Luke that he would announce the five most important rules, and then he told them that they could sit in the chair. After that, Eric talked about the rules. First of all, teachers don't care about students' titles. Secondly, they do not put pressure on students and treat everyone's contract equally. Thirdly, for poor academic performance, they may be expelled. Fourthly, you cannot use magic outside of class. And fifthly, it is forbidden to use violence. Smiling, Eric said that that was all and asked the two if they understood everything. But the two nodded, and then Eric stood up and said that now they would go to class. The door to the classroom opened and Eric and two new students walked inside. The surprise teacher said that it was quite quiet here. And then, going up to the podium, he said that Luke could introduce himself and told the class that he had arrived, the one they had all heard about. Luke stepped forward and loudly said that he was that same pig, a prince from a neighboring country. While the students were in shock, and Iris clutched her head, the teacher, with difficulty holding back his laughter, asked Luke for forgiveness and said that it was he who had confused him. The guy coughed dryly and said that then he would start from the very beginning. Moreover, he introduced himself as Luke of Volg, the third prince of the kingdom of Volg. Then he said loudly that he had come here as the groom of the duke's daughter, and then asked about someone who was here, Emilia. While everyone was talking and surprised that it looked like this was the fiancé of that unsociable woman, the guy sighed, thinking that it looked like she would be hiding from him. Nabi, meanwhile, told the guy that it looks like it is so. Then she added that the prince is now very equanimous. But what will he do next? After that, Eric clapped his hands and told the guys to be quiet, and then turned to Luke and said that he thought they could meet the bride at recess. Then the guy said to Eric that he couldn't show him where Amelia was. He came here completely ignorant. He doesn't even know what his bride might look like. Sighing, Eric said that Amelia was sitting in the back row by the window, and his place would be right behind her. Looking at the girl with freckles, the guy said hello, but as expected, she did not answer. The guy with the brick face told Nabi that she was ignoring him, to which the conductor said that she was simply embarrassed to talk to the boy. Then Nabi added that Amelia uses magic to change her appearance, taming a magical artifact on her neck so that her true face will never be seen. The guy seeing this thought that it looked like she only went to class with this necklace. Why such tricks? There was a knock on the door and Eric allowed entry, and an old man with long gray hair and a beard came in. The old man apologized for interrupting the lesson, and Eric asked the director what happened. 
the director said that he brought two more new students. Eric, not understanding what he was talking about, said that this was the first time he had heard about it. Why such a rush to enroll? He wasn't even notified. In the meantime, the director asked them to come in, and Iris and Luke were already shocked by those whom they did not expect to meet here. The princess and her maid entered the classroom. Suddenly something vibrated, and Luke, shuddering, told the teacher that Duke Guile was calling him. The director smiled and said that apparently this was just about this. The guy answered and said that he was in class right now, did he have something urgent to do? The duke asked for forgiveness and said that he had just received news from his brother, or rather from the king. And then the duke, falling silent for a second, added that he could contact him after he was busy. The guy asked the duke what he probably wanted to tell about Mia's arrival, and the surprised duke, slamming the table, stood up and asked how he knew. Did someone really warn him before the duke? The guy shook his head and looked at Mia and Erica of the Imperial family, but the fact is that they are now standing right in front of him, sighing. The Duke fell back into his chair and said that's how it is. They got there quickly. Then he said that well then they can talk later. After this, teacher Eric told the principal that he seemed to want to clarify the situation, to which he once again apologized for the interrupted lesson and said that in the morning the King's decree had arrived, which stated that Lady Mia and her maid Erica would study with them. Moreover, it was ordered that they need to be enrolled in the same class as Luke. Eric, looking at the director, said that this was a very unusual order, to which the director sighed. He said that, to be honest, this was also the first time he had encountered this. However, he decided that his highness had good reasons. Meanwhile, Luke and Mia's eyes met, and she smiled and blushed and told Prince Luke that they had finally met again. The guy said in surprise to the princess that the same one had told her that she would not enroll because of vision problems. To which the girl, embarrassed and trembling, said that well, the thing is that. She hesitated, and Erica, clenching her fists, said to the princess was bolder and then she said that Prince Luke called her attractive. The embarrassed guy said that yes, he said so, but why tell everyone about it? The embarrassed girl with determination in her eyes said that his words were very important to her. Then she again asked him to say these words again. The guy, not understanding what was going on, simply said that Princess Mia was very attractive and sweet. Because the girl understood that he was not lying, steam began to pour out of her ears, and she completely blushed. The happy one said that it means he wasn't lying then, to which the guy said that in general it was impossible to lie to her. The girl nodded, then clenched her fists and shouted that she wanted them to date and get married someday. The guy froze in shock. His mind felt empty, as if the universe had collapsed right before his eyes. Of course, other students heard this, and someone happily said that this was an offer from the princess, and someone said that the princess really hadn't heard the gossip. Someone else said that she refused the engagement proposed by his family, and someone asked in anger what she saw in this guy. The pale guy asked what was going on with Nabi, to which the guide said that she was just as confused. Coughing dryly, the guy asked Mia why she suddenly started talking about marriage. Was it really an order from the king? To this, the red-faced one shook her head and said that this was not so, and then with moist eyes she said that since the day she met, she has been thinking about Luke all the time. Her heart ached with longing and then Erica said that she must be in love. She immediately realized that this was true, and it seems that she is in love with Prince Luke. The guy was embarrassed by such a revelation and wondered if it was really serious. Then he said that they had only been together for half a day. The girl waved her hand and said that half a day or half a century doesn't matter. From the memories of their meeting, her heart trembles. The guy, seeing this pressure, thought that it seemed like he couldn't resist under such pressure. Then the guy took a deep breath and said that since he was engaged to Amelia and politics were involved, he could not give an answer immediately. Nodding, the princess said that she was also worried about this, but then Amelia complained to her that she couldn't even bring herself to say hello to him and that's why the princess decided to enter the academy last night. Then the princess said that Amelia had a hard time even communicating with her own mother, and therefore she thought that it would be better for everyone if he married Mia. Then in the morning she rushed to her father and for the first time in her life she asked the bespectacled man to eat something for herself. She said that she dreamed of marrying Prince Luke, and therefore he should let her go. The surprised king said that he was engaged to Amelia, to which the girl threatened her father that she would not agree to marry anyone else. Then the king, thoughtfully, said that if her intentions were so serious, then he would arrange for her to enter the academy. That's how she arrived. The guy with a stringed expression looking at her asked if Duke Guile was aware of this matter. 
He reminds her that he ended up here through his efforts. The guy felt that the duke would definitely not like all this. And isn't the girl scared by the evil tongues that call his pig a prince? The girl, putting her hand on her heart, said that no matter what someone gossips about, for her, what kind of person he is inside is more important than his appearance. Suddenly the director said that he, of course, would not want to interfere with the princess's declaration of love. But the lesson would begin soon, so they could postpone their fascinating conversation until later. The embarrassed girl asked for forgiveness, and then turned to the prince and asked if she was really not good enough for him. To which the guy said that he was of course flattered by her confession, but he would prefer not to rush into marriage, and at least start with a bet dates. While the girl stood stunned, a storm erupted in the classroom, saying that he agreed. Someone said that the pig is a prince, it's like a snap, and even they somehow don't believe it. Someone even said that this is beauty and the beast. The guy, hearing all this, thought that it looked like no one was going to spare his feelings. Turning to the director, Luke told him that since the matter concerned the duke and the king, it was better to talk about it without witnesses. Let him not consider this as impudence, but can he, Amelia and Mia talk in private? Thoughtful, the director said that their conversation, of course, was not related to their studies, but soon there would be a lecture on magical summoning, so they must complete the conversation before the start of the second lesson. The guy nodded and wanted to turn to the princess, but suddenly Iris shouted that it was too fast. They should take them with them too, because they are still noble people, even though they are students. The guy, of course, retreated from Iris's pressure, and so they sat in a gazebo in the park. The princess smiled lovingly and thanked Prince Luke for accepting her feelings favorably. He can also address her on a personal level. The guy smiled and said that this was not expected and he was flattered. Then he said that although Mia cannot see herself from the outside, she is very sweet, kind, and even with a unique talent. Then the girl said that her ability to see lies usually pushes everyone away. Doesn't Luke think that's a disadvantage? The guy sat down and said that people around her sometimes feel awkward, but the guy himself thinks that being sincere is not so difficult. Laughing sweetly, the princess said that it was good that she had the courage to confess. And then someone else spoke up, surprising the princess, and especially the guy, with his question. Erica asked that Prince Luke had already spent two nights with Iris, and if there really wasn't any connection between them. The guy said that they had nothing, and the delighted girl said that she still made it. Then Erica grinned and said that the princess found out that he was not accompanied by a butler, but by a pretty girl. She immediately began to be jealous and endlessly repeated that she had to hurry, otherwise his engagement could not be called off. The embarrassed princess shouted at Erica that she asked her not to tell anyone. Nabai explained to the guy that it seemed like Mia was in a hurry because she was afraid that he would fall in love with Iris, or Emilia would charm him with her beauty. She was afraid that she would not find a place next to the guy. It seems the princess expects to become his only lady of his heart. And Erica seemed to add fuel to the fire and reminded that Iris and Amelia are very attractive. The guy grinned and thought about the fact that you shouldn't put your finger in Eric's mouth. After that the guy said that they should start because they don't have enough at times. After that, the guy called the duke and told him that they were allowed to skip the first lesson. The duke nodded and then said that it means he accepted Mia's proposal. The guy nodded and said that he decided that it would be better to make the one who loved him happy than to marry Amelia, against her will. Then the duke said that he, of course, understood this, but he had already warmed up to Luke, so he wouldn't just give up. The guy thought about it, that he starts to bargain, and the guy doesn't seem to mind, but still. Then the duke said that he and the king had found a compromise. After graduating from the academy, he will receive the title of Marquis, provided that he takes me as his wife, and he asked to make Amelia his concubine. At her father's words, Emilia shuddered, and the guy highlighted what he considered the most important. It was a request and not an order. Nabai, meanwhile, explained to the guy that if he refuses, Emilia will be humiliated. Then the guy said to the duke that if during the remaining three years of study, there is no groom for Emilia, what then? To this the duke said that they would not think ahead. Of course, he wants a daughter, but when the time comes, he will choose a groom for him. Their lineage should not end. Although the guy understood that this was a common thing for aristocrats, he still had doubts. Then he told the duke that Amelia suffered from severe shyness. To this, the duke said that he could understand a lot. However, she was obliged to fulfill her duty to her family. For the past five years he has been searching for a solution to no avail. If Amelia becomes his concubine, then she will not need to be forced into motherhood. The girl was embarrassed, and the duke continued, saying that he hoped that the guy could heal her and give him heirs. The guy suddenly thought that fear of men could not appear out of nowhere. First we need to find out the reason. 
Having made up his mind, the guy said that then he would take Amelia as his second bride until the end of their graduation. If he can heal her and they have a child, then the duke must recognize him as his successor, and he will inherit the dukedom. The duke happily asked that they had agreed, and the guy said that yes, but he needed to consult with Princess Mia, so he asked to give him some time. After that the conversation ended. When he disconnected from the connection, the princess asked Prince Luke if he really would do this. He said that he would not marry someone who did not love him. Then the guy said that he thought that he wouldn't be forcefully nice even after marriage. It is hardly possible to get along with a girl who even hides her appearance from everyone. Then Natalie, Amelia's maid, asked if the prince had already noticed the pendant. The guy looked at Amelia, who was silent the whole time, and said that if everything was left like this, then in three years she would be afraid of people, should she allow her illness of isolation to be cured. The girl started to sweat and then trembled, but then didn't say anything. Then Mia asked if shyness could be treated, to which the guy said that he needed to use healing magic and start soon. Then he thinks that in three years he can cope. The surprised girl said that he was such a powerful magician, to which the guy said that in any case he would need the help of Amelia herself. Then he asked Amelia what she thought. Amelia was trembling and could not utter a word. Seeing this, the guy told her to understand that he didn't need anything from her. However, if she does not start to fight her fear, it will only get worse. The girl looked down and was still able to apologize. Then the guy said that when she was engaged, other candidates for grooms would stop pestering her, and once she was healed, she would be able to find her love. He promises that he will immediately break off the engagement if this happens. The girl thanked the guy with difficulty and then said that when she heard that her mother was getting better, she breathed a sigh of relief. And Lala and Anna are happy because they can hug their mother again. She is grateful from the bottom of her heart. She wanted to come to him herself, but she seemed numb with fear. The guy thought about it and said that there was no need to make sacrifices. They can add each other to the list of close friends and start with friendly correspondence. It's not so scary. Amelia raised her head in surprise and said that this was probably so. Looking at him with hard eyes, Mia said that he had such a kind heart, and Iris said that her liking for Mr. Luke was growing. Then the guy said that then they would become engaged to Mia and Amelia, and three years after graduation they would think about getting married. The girl smiled happily and said that it was so. Although she is not much use, she will try to become a good wife. Suddenly a new notification appeared in front of Erica, and she turned to the princess and told her that she, too, was joyful, and told Luke that his father wanted him to come to the royal castle. Nodding, the guy said that this is how he needs to introduce himself, but first he must call on the duke. Then the girl asked if he could continue treating the duchess, to which the guy nodded and said that it wouldn't take much time. Nodding, the girl said that then she would convey it that way. The bell rang and upon hearing it, the guy said that the first lesson was over so they should go to class. Everyone agreed and went to class. Looking at everyone, Eric said that it looks like everything will happen soon. He wanted them to work in groups. Luke, Mia and Amelia will be in one group, and the rest can agree on their own. Suddenly someone raised his hand and shouted for the teacher to wait, because he wanted Amelia to be in his group, as before. Nabi told Luke that it seems the young man knows what Amelia really looks like and hopes that friendship will develop into marriage. The guy, seeing the guy's embarrassed face, thought that it looked like he was really upset, but it was unlikely that Amelia shared his feelings. To this Nabi said that most likely everything is so. Then she said that he was the fourth son of the duke, he would not see an inheritance. That's why he was so happy about the opportunity to study in the same group with Amelia. He doesn't seem to be a bad person. Eric said that the decision was made by the director and is not subject to discussion, and he hopes for understanding. Of course, this upset the guy and seeing this, Luke thought about it. Then Nabi said that the guy was lucky with the division into groups. This way you don't have to worry about someone attacking me out of fear of her ability. Then the guy asked what would happen if they sent a killer under the guise of a student. Then Nabi exclaimed that he could trust her. She uses YGGDRASIL and checks his surroundings. Yggdrasil was created by the gods of this world to store information about all living beings. And she can look at the data entered into the system. Nabi said that the students in his class were not suspicious. The guy nodded smiling and told her to keep him posted. At the same time, the teacher said that the ceremony that would begin tomorrow only happens once a year. It is held in four places, in their academy, in the king's castle, in the temple, and in the guild. Tomorrow the first year students will participate, the day after tomorrow the second and third years, and on the last day, ordinary people. The guy was surprised that ordinary people would also be allowed in. After that, Eric moved on to the instructions. Summoned creatures enter into a contract with the owner and feed on his magical power. 
The summoner bears full responsibility for the creature. The owner pays for the room for the summoned creature. The state provides a subsidy for the maintenance of the creature above Rana B. If the summoned creature is small in size, then it lives with the owner. The summoned creature becomes the master's familiar. Cruelty to a familiar is prohibited. After the call, the owner decides whether to enter into a contract or abandon the familiar. Eric then said that first-year students usually summon a low-ranking creature, and there have been cases where a low-ranking familiar has harmed even experienced mages. Sometimes the owner even died, so they must take it seriously. Teachers will be next to them, but they will tell you if a familiar appears, which it is better to refuse. The bell rang and the teacher said that that was probably all. After lunch, they must change into sportswear and gather at the stadium. While everyone was getting up, Luke looked at Iris and said that they should go to the dining room, to which she said that they couldn't. Pouting, the guy said that she herself said that for 500 they are geniuses, they should have tasty food there, you have to try it at least once. He, of course, understands that everyone will immediately begin to discuss him and point their fingers at him, but still he is not used to this. The indignant Iris said that he was quite impudent, but still he couldn't go to the dining room so as not to break his diet. The indignant guy then asked Amelia where she usually had lunch, and Amelia shuddered. Then the maid answered for her, saying that they always eat in the room. Sighing, the prince knight said that now everything is clear, no one will go to the dining room. Then the embarrassed Erica approached the prince and asked if he could dine with the princess. And then, embarrassedly playing with her fingers, she said that the fact was that she didn't know how to cook. The guy nodded and said that he understood. There are cooks in the royal court, and therefore Erica did not need to cook. The embarrassed girl said that she herself would eat in the dining room, and could I entrust the care of Mrs. Mia to Iris? The guy turned to Iris and asked her what she thought, and she, inflamed, said that she didn't know what princesses loved, but she would try to please, and let Erica join them too. It won't be difficult for her to prepare another portion. Of course, Erica was happy about this and nodded. Then the guy asked Amelia if she would like to go around with them. Natalie knows how to cook. If they unite, it will take much less time and effort. Emilia turned pale and Natalie said not to worry about her. Then she doubtfully asked Natalie whether it would be easier for her to cook with Iris, to which she froze for a moment, and then, flushed, said that it would be much easier. In addition, her diet will become more varied. It will be much easier for them to buy food, wash dishes and cook. The sparkle in the maid's eyes made the girl feel sick and she agreed. Then Natalie said that she had heard that boys were reluctantly allowed into the girls' dormitory, so they would gather in Mr. Luke's room. In the guy's room, the guy sat with Princess Mia and looked at the maids who were doing something in the kitchen and thought about how expensive it must have been in Japan. Nabai told him that he was grumbling like an old man, to which the guy said that but she behaves as if they were already married. Nabai said that this is so, it seems that she cannot calm down. At the same time, Mia herself doubted something. And yet having made up her mind, she told Mr. Luke that they fell on him out of the blue, and for this she apologizes. Turning around, the girl also apologized to Amelia. The guy smiled and said that there was nothing wrong with that, and then awkwardly scratched the back of his head and said that he really gets a little nervous in the presence of five girls. At the same time, the embarrassed Amelia said that, to be honest, she was even glad that Princess Mia had arrived. Alone, it would be difficult for her to decide to take any action. Then Amelia said that it seemed like Mr. Luke didn't care what she really looked like, to which the guy squinted and said that he would be lying if he said that he wasn't interested. But did she really think that he would lose his head when he saw her real face? The girl, looking away, said that it probably wouldn't come to that, but his attitude towards her would definitely change. The guy grinned and said that he would have considered her too self-confident, but he already realized that everyone, including the Duke's guards, was falling in love with him. Smiling, Mia said that's for sure they were throwing such glances. The embarrassed girl, blushing, shouted that she would apologize for them. Then she said that she tried not to appear in public, but sometimes she was forced to go to balls and dinners without this necklace. Then Navi said that Amelia is known not only for her beauty, she is also revered for her good deeds as a sister of mercy. The guy grinned and thought that, unlike him, yes. The girl bowed her head and said that in any case she would ask for forgiveness for her deception. The guy said that enough apologies, because as Mia said, form should not be more important than content. Hearing this, Amelia felt relieved, and Nabai, noticing this, said to the guy. After this, it was time for the first training session. Teacher, she said that today they will start with 10 laps around the field. Hearing this, the guy was in despair, thinking that they would really start this way. Nabai said that this is a night academy and he needs to work hard to fit in. 
there should be at least minimum physical fitness requirements. The guy, running with difficulty, thought that he understood everything, but he was dying. Suddenly the teacher noticed something and irritably told Luke that it was forbidden to help himself with magic, he should not cheat. Then Nabi said that the coach seemed to have a magical sense. The guy said that he raised his endurance skill to level 5, but nothing helps. Then Nabi said that he still carried pawns with sand, or rather with fat. He needs at least level 7 stamina to make it easier. The guy, sweating, asked if only 2 points would help, to which Nabi said that from the 6th level the scale changes. At level 10, even with his current weight, he will be able to jump up to the 2nd floor of the school. The guy was extremely surprised by what he heard. And then Nabi said that so far his physical condition does not correspond to this level. Even Mia was ahead of him, so he had to try harder. While the guy was running, others mocked him, saying that a pig was running and shaking like jelly. Of course, the guy was offended by this, and when he fell, they laughed at him, saying that he flopped. Of course, Mia heard this too and indignantly screamed at the others, telling them to stop. Because Luke was trying his best, they should be ashamed. Iris was already next to the guy while Mia ran towards him but the guy felt very sorry. After training, the guy was lying on his desk. Nabi said that if he had not been kicked out of the equestrian academy, all this would not have happened to him. It was lesson 4, magic control. Eric, looking at the scoreboard, told Luke that his academic record included the highest score in magic management, and therefore asked the guy what his current skill level was. The guy straightened up and said that in his country it is believed that only fools talk about their skills, is it really different here? Eric, hearing this, said that it's the same here, but in class they work in groups, so if he has a high level in magic control, he will be able to help the others. The guy nodded understandingly. Then Mia said that, for example, she had poor vision since childhood, so she was not going to study at the academy, and she almost didn't know how to control magic. Hearing this, the guy raised his hand and said that he would help Mia. Nodding, Eric said that if something was not clear, he could ask. So first you need to train within the group. The guy said that he had agreed to help, but most likely he would not be explained in the same way as the teacher. Smiling, Mia said that he could explain in his own way, and Iris clenched her fists and said that she had long wanted to be his student. The guy asked what level Iris was, to which she embarrassedly grabbed her cheeks and said that she couldn't say that. Then the guy asked how you can teach without knowing the level of the student. She can show him her skill chart. The girl, embarrassed, said that it's all the same to go out into the street without clothes. Seeing this, the guy rolled his eyes and said that there was too much drama. Then the guy asked what her level was, to which she smiled and said that she had the fourth but would soon get the fifth. Then the guy said that he had the sixth one and was about to get the seventh. Of course, Iris was shocked and almost screamed, but the guy stopped her and said that who was yelling at the whole class and revealing the secrets of the mentor. The girl asked for forgiveness while the guy pulled her cheeks. Turning around, the guy said that Iris needs practice, because this is the only way to raise the level. Then the guy said that she and Mia should have the main type of magic, monastic, to which Mia looked at him in surprise. The guy didn't understand, and she explained that he seemed to be ruffling like that because of the color of her hair, but she owns the magic of water, lightning, and fire. The guy thought for a moment and said that it wouldn't be easy because it's difficult to combine fire and water, just like water and lightning. Then the girl said that she wouldn't succeed, and the guy told her not to rush to conclusions, because if you combine the elements, you'll get something. As an example, the guy summoned a ball of air and a ball of flame and combined them into a firestorm. Surprised, Iris said that this is the magic of combination. Then the guy asked Mia if she couldn't see well, and she said that she saw how green shifted with red, so the spell must have gotten stronger. Then she said that she sees magic as colored spots and human emotions and also distinguishes them by color. Suddenly Nabi said that this ability is inherent in people, albinos. The guy nodded, and then Mia told the guy that the prince would tell the mini tricks for controlling magic. The guy said that the trick is practice and more practice. The surprised girl asked what that was all about. But the guy raised his finger and said that he meant that you need to train even in your sleep. Of course, no one understood the meaning of his words. Then the guy said that you can develop monastic magic with the help of a household light spell. The strength of the glow depends on the amount of magical energy. You can even make it invisible. The spell is simple, so it is suitable for constant practice. If you get the hang of it, you can soon maintain your glow for a very long time. Here he holds it for 8 hours. For fire magic, a heat spell is suitable, for water, cooling, for wind a blow, for lightning a discharge, and for darkness immersion. 
The exercises are not difficult, but effective. For earth magic you will have to create pebbles, well, he thinks so. In general, it is very useful to practice household spells. Once they are successful with their main type, magic, other types can be practiced. Iris was delighted, and her eyes sparkled like stars. Then the guy said they could try every spell. During dinner, when the table was already set and while the girls were discussing what kind of familiar would come to them tomorrow, there was a knock on the door. The knock made three maids stand up at once, and they approached the door, asked forgiveness for the wait, and asked who was there. A voice was heard asking for forgiveness for the unexpected visit. When the guy looked there, the man with blonde hair said that he couldn't wait to meet Luke. Next to him stood a beautiful girl very similar to Mia. Of course they found out that it was his and her majesty. Luke turned pale thinking that they had rushed because of him. While Iris was trembling looking at them outside the door, the king asked if it was possible to enter. Trembling, Iris said that of course it was possible. Seeing how the maids were worried, the king smiled and said that this was a private visit, so there is no need to worry so much. After that, they sat down opposite the guy and the king introduced himself first, saying that his name was Zeno and he was Mia's father. Then he thanked the guy for saving her from the attack of robbers. Seeing how the king was bowing, the guy turned pale, said that they should not bow, and then introduced himself as Luke. Then the king said that he was informed that he agreed to marry Mia, and therefore he wanted to meet in person. So he showed up unannounced, smiling. The queen said that he had brought her along too, and therefore she asked forgiveness for both of them. At night after the bath, the guy went into the living room and said that it was good to have some water. Iris smiled and said that Mr. Luke seemed to really like taking a bath. The guy sat down on the sofa and said that it was so. After running, his legs hurt so much, I wish there would be a massage now. But he would like a massage using healing magic. Hearing this, the girl's eyes lit up, and she clenched her fists, and said that this was a great chance and she understood how to do it. Then suddenly Iris said that it turns out his teacher was Edward, isn't it amazing? The guy, hearing this, smiled and said that she should not tell anyone about it, because the teacher tells everyone that he does not take people as students, because it is a secret. The surprised girl asked why and the guy explained that the teacher said that people die quickly. The girl nodded understandingly. Then the guy said that he would show the massage technique on her, for greater efficiency, she needed to warm up. The girl nodded straight up. And now, some time later, the girl who was stuffed was sitting on the couch in a t-shirt and shorts. The guy raised his finger and said that this technique requires the initial level of water magic, or monastic magic, as well as the third level of magic management. Then lifting the girl's leg, the guy said that he saw that her leg was inflamed, the muscles were tense, and then carefully pressed on one place and said that it was here. The girl screamed that it hurt, but the guy did not stop and said that you need to imagine how the aqua treatment pulsates at your fingertips. Simultaneously with the explanation, he used magic and asked if she felt it, to which the girl said that it still hurt, but still felt good. Then the guy told her to try to turn on her magic sense. The spell acts as if in tiny circles. This technique was quite difficult and after it the guy asked her how she felt. The girl looked at the leg with a twinkle in her eyes and said that the muscles had completely stopped aching. Nodding, the prince knight said it was her turn now and the girl said she would try. After that, the girl began to apply the technique on the guy's leg and seeing how she was doing it. The guy told her not to direct magic deep into the body. She must cast the spell one at a time without exerting any effort. Tired, the girl said that it was difficult, and then an idea came to the guy's head and he asked that she also uses the same air spell for 10 minutes when drying her hair, isn't it? It's the same here. The girl said in surprise that if everything was like that, then she seemed to understand the technique, so she would try again. But that day, Iris did not succeed. Feeling unwell, the girl said that Mr. Luke explained well, but she still couldn't do it. The guy smiled and said that it would not work right away. He also needed practice once. Then he smiled and said that this technique is also useful for practicing magic control. Having caught fire with the idea, the girl said that then she would try her best. Getting up from her seat, the girl asked Mr. Luke about how about a little training. The surprised guy asked that he had already taken a bath. Then the girl said that he would go again after training, so it's okay, but now they will pump their abs. Looking away, the guy said that he was afraid that he would never be able to. When he lay down on his back, his legs went up and seeing this, the girl said that it was true. Then she came up and held the guy by the legs and said that if she held him, drive. Getting up, the guy happily said that he had succeeded in telling the truth, but then noticing what was in front of him, he thought that it was only very awkward. The next morning, someone knocked on the window and opened the curtains, and then wished the guy good morning. The stunned guy abruptly stood up and asked who it was, and Mia smiled and said that it was his wife Mia. 
The guy thought that they were not married yet, and then asked why she was here so early. Then Erica said that she actually let it slip that he goes for walks in the morning. The surprised girl asked that it was some kind of secret. Getting up from his seat, the guy asked Mia that she wanted to go for a walk with them. The girl came up and said that it was so. She needs to move more, too. Iris smiled and said that while they were walking, she would cook breakfast. Erica thanked Iris for this and so they went for a walk. Walking through the park, the guy said that by the way, today is the conscription ceremony. The girl told him to be quick. Then the guy asked Mia what kind of familiar she would like. She smiled and said that she would like to be familiar, with whom you can sleep in an embrace. The guy said that he had a pet. Then the girl asked about whom Mr. Luke would like, to which the guy thought that he already knew that it would be Nabi. The academy is in the hall prepared for the invocations. The director stood up and laughed and said that they were starting the long-awaited summoning ceremony. Then the old man told everyone to look carefully at what should be done. They must first direct a stream of magical energy into this ball. The summoning will begin when the ball shines, and soon a creature will appear who will like their magical energy. As soon as the director did this, the magic circle lit up and a dragon appeared below. Smiling, the director said that here is the wyvern, and then thanked her for responding. Then he said that since it was a female, he would call it Pippi. After that, the old man said that giving the familiar a name would strengthen their bond. After that, the director said that he showed them the procedure, and then the teachers would help them. The guy, looking at the satisfied old man, thought that he probably really wants to fly on Pippi. After that, the announcer said that they would start the ceremony with knights from class F to class A looking down. The guy said that there were quite a lot of knights around the summoning site. Then Nabi said that usually peaceful creatures respond to the call, but sometimes one of them goes on a rampage. Then the knights and teachers will have to ensure the safety of everyone. Then the announcer said that the king himself had unexpectedly attended the ceremony. He probably wants to keep order too. Someone said that he rather wanted to look after Mia, to which the guy nodded. The last one was the class of magicians. A red slime came to Iris, an ivy rabbit came to Natalie, a silver wolf came to Erica, and a magical hare came to Amelia. Everyone was sent back and now it was Princess Mia's turn. After that, she put her hand on the ball and directed the flow of magic. Immediately, an animal appeared with a four-pointed star in its forehead. Someone asked who it was, because he had never seen such animals. Someone else asked if anyone had a reference book. One teacher raised his hand and soon found out who it was. It turned out to be a sacred carbuncle. As soon as the king heard this, he stood up and shouted that Mia was doing well. Turning around, the girl told Mr. Luke to help her choose a name for him, to which Luke said that she should name him herself. The girl said she couldn't get a good look at him, so she didn't know which name would be appropriate. Then the guy described the appearance of the animal, saying that it is at the withers, about 30 centimeters, looks like a fox. He also has long and fluffy ears and a tail, and his coat is golden. There is something like a jewel on the forehead. The girl asked what kind of stone it was and the guy said that it was bright red, and probably spittle. The girl hugged the animal and said that then she would call him spittle. The teacher said that in their country and neighboring countries, sacred animals appeared on the pry only three times. That's what royal blood means. Surely the prince won't let you down either. Prince Luke is the last to summon the familiar. Hearing this, the guy turned pale and thought about why the teacher was pushing so hard. The guy put his hand on the ball and the circle shone brightly. After the call, no one saw anyone, and everyone wondered if the call had really failed. Someone finally noticed the pixie and everyone laughed, saying that here's a prince for you. The disgruntled guy asked what was funny here, it was Nabi, how dare they even mock the cute fairy. Nabi pouted and blushed, and then climbed inside the system window and seeing this, the guy asked her why she climbed there, she should get out. Pixie screamed that she would never do it. Everyone is laughing at her, she will be sitting here. Looking at her, the guy thought that it looked like she was really angry. They had been waiting for this moment ever since they met the goddess. The guy looked up and saw that the magic circle had lit up again and now a dragon had appeared. The teachers were stunned. Eric asked if there were really two creatures responding to the same call. Then the dragon bent down to the guy and licked him. The delighted guy told Diana to stop, because he was already drooling. The dragon purred, and the guy hugged her head. It turned out to be Diana, his recently deceased dragoness. The goddess helped her to be reborn in a new body. Then the king shouted, asking Luke that she had really come to his call, to which the guy nodded. Stroking the dragon, the guy said that they had passed the naming ceremony a long time ago, so she heard him. Apparently, she belongs to one of the ancient species, the Black Dragons. Of course, everyone was stunned, but suddenly, Diana felt something and frowned, raised her head and growled, and meanwhile the magic circle lit up again and a head appeared. 
Closing her eyes, she said that it was a little cramped in here. He can't fit in here. Who chose the hall for the draft at all? The shock guy was looking at this dog, and it looks like the dog heard his thoughts and growled, said what kind of dog she was. She won't let herself be laughed at. The surprised guy thought that she could also read minds, and then suddenly Diana growled at him, and he said in surprise that no one had grinned at him for thousands of years, and then growled again, from which Diana fell to the ground. While the guy turned pale and rummaged with cold sweat running down his face, the beast said that his name was Fenrir, and this was his newly born child. A small version of the creature also appeared there, and she said that the baby was weak and couldn't even drink her milk. Meanwhile, the guy stroked the dragon, who was already unconscious and said that she decided to take advantage of the call and send him here so that he could nurse the child with magic. Smiling, Fenrir said that he was a smart boy. Then the guy said that but he already has two contracts. Then the king stood up and asked Lady Fenrir to let him sign this contract. An angry Fenrir asked what kind of jokes he was joking about. Was he planning to ruin the child? From this, the king froze and Fenrir turned to look at the guy. Then Luke asked if he was the one who needed the contract. Fenrir nodded and asked if he could say it in front of everyone. And the guy smiled awkwardly and thought about what he would like to know. Then Nabai said it looked like it was his magic. He has magical energy. Since he came from another world, he is able to enter into a contract even with a creature that cannot become a familiar to an ordinary person. Growling, Fenrir bared his teeth at the king and said to let the boy conclude a contract with her offspring. And if her child dies, she will grind this country to powder. The king shuddered, and Luke, enraged, shouted asking what kind of news this was. Then, taking the creature, he said that he agreed. Fenrir nodded and said that that was nice, now he should give him a name. The guy said that he would call him Hatchai, and then Nabai said that she probably had to come up with something better. But Fenrir exclaimed that it was a good name. Then Nabai said that he was too weak to give consent. He would have to sign a contract forcibly. The guy nodded and said that he thought the goddess could do it. Nabai nodded to the imperial family, which she also liked so much. The joyful Fenrir said that she was calm now. He should keep an eye on him. After that Fenrir disappeared. The guy looked at the angry king and thought that for the first time in history three familiars appeared, and it looks like he should wait for a lot of clapping. The guy put his hand on the dragon's head and asked her how she was. She abruptly opened her eyes and jumped up in surprise and asked the guy how he was. The stun guy asked that she was reasonable. Meanwhile, the dragoness was looking for the beast, asking where it had gone. The stun guy asked that she could do this with him as well as Fenrir, to which Nabai said that it looked like she, like the guy, had retained some of her memories. The stun guy said it couldn't be, but Nabai added that Diana will be able to use previously accumulated knowledge. She is one of the ancient dragons, so 14 years of her memories will still be useful to them. The stun guy asked what it meant that she was already an adult. Nabai said that ancient dragons have been living for hundreds of centuries. According to human ones, she is now about 14 years old, and she seems to have learned the human language from an old dwarf whom she once saved from a werewolf. It looks like Diana visited the village for delicious sake. The guy asked that she was so addicted to the bottle, to which Nabai said that, apparently, the dwarves were happy to treat the savior and were not against her visits. The dragon absorbs excess energy around itself. When the area is freed from unnecessary magic, dangerous magical creatures leave there, and people will lose less. The surprised guy thought that he thought that thanks to the temples, the owners of large magic stones could not approach towns and villages. Then Nabai said that the dwarves lived in a tiny settlement near the mines, so there was no temple there. Then the guy said that the dragon's presence was good for them. Suddenly, Diana asked the guy what happened, and the guy raised his head and said that Fenrir, who appeared here, was their friend. The stun dragon said that it couldn't be, because she was very strong. The guy pointed at the child in his hand and said that her cub was also his familiar, so they needed to make friends. The disgruntled dragon said that she alone would have been enough. Then, looking at the fox cub, she said that, after all, he was very weak. The guy looked at Nabai and said that he needed to make a saddle, and he needed to get the skin of the antelopes that Diana loved. Where would they fly to? At the same time, Nabai said that there are several herds 30 kilometers away. The guy nodded and said that then they would go there. When the guy was about to mount the dragon, Zeno stopped him. He said he wanted to have a face-to-face -face conversation with him. The guy put his hand on Diana's body and said that he would do one thing now, and then they would talk. The surprised king, with a twinkle in his eyes, asked if he could fly on a dragon. Then the guy said it was dangerous without a saddle. Then Zeno said that he studied to be a dragon rider so he could cope. And that's how the king sat on Diana. 
The surprised guy asked if the guards had really let him go, to which the king smiled and said that he would probably be scolded later. Then the dragon asked the owner where to fly, and the guy looked at the map, pointed to the right place and the dragon flew in that direction. She was flying very fast, and the king liked it very much. With shining eyes, he told Luke that he was delighted. Looking at him, the guy said that they were actually hunting. Then the guy told Diana that there was a herd of antelopes ahead, and in order not to damage the skins and meat, she should aim at the heads. One will belong to her. The joyful Diana said that she would do everything right, and the king, who heard his order, said that they were hunting antelopes for the lord. The guy nodded, and said that their meat was delicious and the skin was excellent. The indignant king said that they were dangerous, to which the guy calmly said that he had already tried such a hunt, and the dragon was not afraid of antelopes. Antelopes began to be seen below, and the guy told the king to hold on tight. Diana was hit by a whole flock with a swing, and several fell without their heads. Stunned, Zeno said that it was really a strong dragon. The guy told Diana that she was doing great, and they were flying back. Zeno said that he did not like when animals were killed, but he liked hunting, so would he take it again. The guy smiled and thought that the king was asking and not ordering, which is quite nice. The guy said that he certainly does it. Then, the guy said that since things were over, they should fly home. And now they were at the table, where the buffalo steak was served. Pulling a smile, Zeno apologized for the fact that the guy had to cook for everyone again. The guy smiled and said that there was nothing wrong with that. Meanwhile, Mia looked down with sad eyes and told the guy that the students whose familiars were dragons were being transferred to the Dragon Riders Academy. He had studied there before, so it will also be transferred. The guy said that all princes in their country are given a dragon egg as a child. Therefore, they were not allowed to choose their place of study. Zeno forced a smile and said that they had the same thing. Then he asked about what the guy really didn't like about the Dragon Academy. The guy looked at the status window and thought about the fact that he chose military science as the first specialization and combat magic as the second. But they defiantly replaced the first one with healing. The guy said that he just wants to become a combat magician and that's it. Zeno sighed and said that he would like to see him as a dragon rider, but respected his intentions. The guy thanked me for understanding, and then said that he wanted to discuss something, and then he asked what was the matter. Remembering, Zeno asked if Luke planned to return to his homeland on occasion. Zeno said he was asking because King Julius wanted to see him. Hearing this, the guy irritably thought that his father probably needed Diana and Fenrir no other way. Then Zeno said that he was already his future son-in-law, and having acquired the ancient dragon and the Fenrir cub as familiars, he could count on the ducal title in the future. Meanwhile, a worried Mia asked what it meant for Luke to stay in their country. The guy thought about it, thinking that Luke is of course attached to the family, but here he is also considered part of the family, though. The guy said that, to be honest, he did not want to leave. Mia sighed with relief and said that he had calmed her down. Suddenly Carmia, the first consort of King Zeno, spoke up. She said that then it was time for them to have an engagement party with Mia. She hopes that he will take her daughter Alice too. Hearing this, Mia clapped her hands with a twinkle in her eyes and said that it was a great idea. How well my mother thought of it. Then she told her father to start preparing as soon as possible. You can't be stingy so as not to give rise to gossip. Then, the girl's mother told Mia to wait because it seems Luke is unhappy. The surprised girl asked if this was really the case and then looked at Luke. The guy looked at Mia and said that I remember her saying that she did not like pompous weddings of aristocrats. Sighing, Mia said that it was true, but she was only very afraid that he would suddenly change his mind, so she was in a hurry. Zeno said he was worried about something else, no matter how King Julius decides to take Luke away by force. When the guy heard this, he asked if they could call him together. He wants to talk to him personally. Zeno, as it was said, called the king and as soon as the connection was established, immediately that king shouted that Zeno was really hiding from him. Why so long? Hitting the table, Luke shouted at his father, telling him to be polite, because he was still talking to the king. The old man looked at his son and said that it was a trapdoor. Then he said that he had summoned excellent familiars, now he can return, at home he will receive the title of duke. Looking at his father, the guy said that he was too persistent, he doesn't want to go home. Upon hearing this, the king, enraged, shouted at Zeno, saying that he had sent a beautiful daughter to Luke to lure the dragon away from him. He's a crook. Now the guy was annoyed and said that he and Mia started dating before the conscription ceremony. If anyone needs his familiars, it's his father. The enraged father shouted that he was trying for him. But then Luke's mother pushed him out and looking at him, she immediately began to cry. The guy was stunned when he saw his mother, and then the old man said that Amelia had cried all her eyes out. 
he should at least think about his mother. The guy said she was crying because he had secretly sent the guy out of the country. The guy sighed and told his mother not to worry, because everything is fine with him now. Besides, everyone here is kind to him. He is dating a girl who loves him, and therefore he has no plans to return. Then, the mother asked what it meant. He was there of his own free will, and the guy thought about it and said that the princess was an interrogator of the highest rank. This stunned the queen and even the king. Then Mia thoughtfully went to the screen and asked for forgiveness for interrupting them, and then introduced herself to them. Then she said that she and Mr. Luke had recently become a couple, and she is pleased to meet Mrs. Amelia, Mr. Julius. Looking at the girl, the woman asked her what her intentions were. The girl bowed her head and said that she knew what was being said about Mr. Luke, but she knew that Luke was a wonderful person. He saved her life and it was worth talking to him a little bit as she fell in love. She loves Prince Luke with all her heart. Squinting, Amelia said that there was nothing to object to such pressure. Smiling, Mia thanked the queen. Then Amelia asked Luke about what about Lulu, because they loved each other and were going to get married. The guy said he had heard that she was engaged to another man. When Amelia heard this, she grabbed her husband by the beard and shouted that they needed to maintain a good relationship. Sighing, the guy said that he and Mia would come to stay with them in the summer, then they would decide about Lulu. At the same time, Amelia said that he would not return home, and the king said that it meant he was betraying his mother. It certainly hit the guy in the heart. The guy said that if anything, it was his father who betrayed him. Then Amelia asked her son if he really liked it there. The guy smiled and said that he really liked it here. He can be a student and study. You don't have to be bored. The woman nodded, and the guy, seeing his father's condition, told her to take care of her father. Then he told his father not to bother King Zeno. Then the guy smiled grimly and said that if he got down to business again, he would fly in on a dragon and teach him politeness. Upon hearing this, the man shouted that he should not dare to threaten him. At the tea party, while the guy was drinking tea, Hatchai popped out from inside his clothes and purred. While the guy looked at him in surprise, immediately the other girls looked at him with affection and then everyone started taking pictures of him from the tablet. Seeing that Mia was looking at the tablet, the guy asked her that she had found out his data, to which she and Erica froze, and then the girl, feeling awkward, nodded. Then the guy said that apparently she found out through the tablet, to which she apologized, said it was out of curiosity. The guy said it was okay, no, so she could be calm. Then he asked with a grin that now she knows his weight, and she is still satisfied with everything. To which the girl tilted her head and said that she might just have nothing to compare with, but she did not see any problems. Then the guy asked her what she thought of Hatchai and the girl lit up and said that the second place in sweetness, after Spinel, definitely belongs to him. The guy became interested in how the rating was compiled. At the same time, Mia's mother asked Luke to let her support his familiar, and of course the guy agreed. Then the woman stroking the animal said that what a soft fur she had. After all, he was a cutie. Seeing this, Mia herself also wanted to stroke him and she shouted about it to her mother. Then Zeno asked that he seemed to have gotten a little stronger, to which the guy nodded, and when he saw the rank, he said in surprise that it looked like he already had rank 12. Then Zeno said that apparently hunting with a dragon also affected his skill level. Suddenly, Emilet's maid asked Luke that he still had a fairy, to which he asked what she was saying about Nabai. As soon as the guy called Nabai's name, she cheerfully appeared and said that they were calling, and she came. When Amelia saw the fairy, she was immediately delighted. At the same time, she told Nabai that she would choose a dress for her, to which Pixie of course agreed. The guy was puzzled by everything, and the guy asked Nabai about why she didn't speak out loud, and she, in rage, screamed that yes, it was because she was small and they couldn't hear her. The guy shuddered in fear and said that it looked like she was ready to tear up anyone who touched her. Pouting, she said that this was not the case at all, because that could not happen to her. The surprised guy asked if it was impossible to touch her, to which the girl smiled and went up to the guy and said that it was possible only if she allowed it herself. When the girl touched the guy's finger, he said that she looked like a feather and she also had a vanilla flavor. At the same time, Emilia, seeing this all red, asked Mr. Luke if she could or not. The guy asked if Nabi was against it, to which she smiled and said that she allowed dear Emilia. Upon hearing this, the guy shouted at her not to call her that. Then Nabi only told the guy that she just gave in to emotions, and therefore asked for forgiveness. Then the guy asked why she needed another outfit, to which the girl said that Amelia represents pixie fairies exactly like that. And it's not difficult for her to change her appearance at all. If she and Amelia become friends, they will also see each other more often. Maybe she'll start to trust the guy a little bit. The guy nodded and said they would take a look. 
When Pixie touched Amelia's finger, she said that she smelled sweets, to which the guy said that the aroma of vanilla had a relaxing effect. The surprised girl said that Mr. Luke knew so much, and Nabi proudly straightened up and laughed complacently, saying that of course it was true, because this was her master. She chose it herself. Suddenly Mia's mother said that the animal seemed to have fallen asleep, to which King Zeno said that then they had better go to sleep, so as not to wake him up. The girl nodded and started to get up. As she left, the king's first wife looked at Emilia, and she bowed and said that she wanted to remain silent, but it was disrespectful of her to wear this necklace in the presence of his highness. She begs their forgiveness, saying that she cannot appear in public without him, although she used to wear a necklace only in class. Then the queen said that she had never shown her face to Luke either, and how she was going to get married. Then the guy said, Mrs. Carmia, that Amelia would open up to him when she wanted it, and then the angry queen asked if he really wasn't interested in what she looked like. The guy smiled and said that of course he was interested, however, he was not stupid enough to force her to do something. At the same time, Navi approached Amelia, showed her fist and said that if someone offended her, the pixie would show this person where the crayfish hibernate. The girl smiled and thanked the pixie. Some time later, when only the guy and Iris were left in the house, the guy was sitting by the bed and deciding what to do. Iris was interested in this and she asked him what he was doing, to which the guy said that he wanted to make shampoo for his hair, and then down with the scented oil they're using now. Hearing this, the girl's eyes sparkled and she screamed that this was a great idea. So she joined the development too, and some time later the shampoo was ready. Smiling, the guy said that now the shampoo and conditioner in the bottles are ready. Then the girl asked about how to use them. The guy said it was simple. First, the shampoo removes dirt, and then the conditioner restores and nourishes the hair. Then, appearing out of nowhere, Navi said that she had made lotion and face cream and beautiful girls could not do without them. The guy suddenly thought that he wanted to try it too. The girl thought about it, said that she did not understand anything and then smiled and said that she had come up with an idea, maybe they would take a bath together. He made such a statement. The guy's eyes popped out of his head and confused. He asked what she was talking about at all. Then he said that he would explain to her how to use makeup, and she should prepare the bathroom. The girl nodded and said that she would do everything. Then she said that they should practice first. The guy nodded, and then the girl appeared in a bikini and cheerfully told Mr. Luke that they would take care of his abs. The guy smiled with saliva in his mouth and said that it should be so. After that, they started with the press and the guy, seeing these two mounds in front of him, blushed every time. Then he shouted that if he attacked her, she shouldn't complain. The demon lord blushed and said that she was ready. Then Nabi said that it looked like she was really ready and considered the guy a contender for a spouse. Apparently, familiars have become the deciding factor. Then Nabi said that, nevertheless, the most important thing is that the chosen one makes him happy. Irritated, the guy thought that there was something to choose the one with whom he would be happy. Then the guy asked if the girl was afraid that Mia would hate her if they dated. The girl shuddered and said in shock that she hadn't thought about it somehow. Of course she is very afraid. And at 26, the guy couldn't get up anymore, but seeing the bikini, he realized that this was really strength, because he forced himself until his last breath. And finally the 30 gathered, and the guy fell to the ground exhausted. The girl smiled and said that he was doing well and they would continue tomorrow. Breathing hard, the guy thanked Iris, and the girl told him to drink some water, and then they would go to the bathroom. And soon they were in the bathroom, which was steaming from the warm water. The guy smiled and said that first they should soak in hot water, to which the girl happily agreed. When they were sitting in the bathroom, suddenly Iris asked that Mr. Luke did not want to take concubines, to which he nodded and said that he had barely agreed with his father and Zeno, this is a very fragile balance. The girl nodded and said, family feuds are not uncommon. Nodding, the guy said that's why he doesn't want to be the cause of them. Suddenly, the girl, having decided on something, raised her head and said that, but you don't have to spoil the attitude, do you? The guy nodded, and then the girl said that, for example, Princess Mia is friendly with Erica, and there is nothing to quarrel with them. Besides, she's friends with Erica too. Then the guy asked what she was sure of herself, to which she nodded, and the guy smiled and said that she looked like an optimist. Smiling, the girl said that she thought they had perfect conditions. In three years, he just can't help but fall in love with her. Laughing, the guy said that he had already given his word to King Zeno, so he did not promise an engagement. But after the wedding, she could become a second wife. This, of course, pleased the girl. And the girl joyfully said that she was so glad. So with Amelia, he would have three wives. Then the girl said that she couldn't wait for them to get married, couldn't she? The guy, looking at these charms, still could not restrain himself and stood up and said that they needed to wash their hair. To show how to use the shampoo, 
he will wash her hair himself. The girl turned pale when she heard this and the girl said that it was by no means. After all, if someone finds out that the prince helped her to wash, then they will get rid of her. The guy didn't understand what she was talking about, said that but it's always better to teach in practice, isn't it? Then he used shampoo and then rubbed it to a foam, saying that this is how it is done and then he began to wash Iris's hair. The surprised girl said that it turns out that it is pleasant, to which the guy said that you need to gently massage the scalp with your fingertips. After that, the guy poured out the water and then said that now they would apply a nourishing balm. The main thing is not to overdo it. After that, you need to wait a little, but for now you need to wash yourself. The girl nodded and so they began to wash. After that the guy said that when the conditioner was absorbed into the hair, it was easily washed off. One rinse is enough. The girl looked at her hair and said in surprise that it had become so soft. The guy said that all that remained was to wash up. You need to lather the cleanser and massage your face. While the girl was surprised that her skin became so clean but did not shrink from dryness, the guy smiled and said that he went, and she should not touch the oil, and did not dry her hair. She did not understand, but the prince did not explain. Inflating her cheeks, she followed the guy and said that it was possible to ruin her hair, to which he slapped the chair, and told her to sit down. After that, he used magic and started drying the girl's hair. The girl, interested, asked what kind of magic it was, to which the guy said that when she practiced the heating spell, she would also be able to do so. Well, now everything is ready. The girl, looking at her hair, said that it was so shiny, and besides, she could run her fingers through it. Suddenly she ran away and said she would be right back. The shocked guy said that it was already 8 o'clock, where was she, to which the girl said that she would be a minute. The guy sitting on the chair said that he just wanted to ask for a massage. And some time later, the girl returned, and the guy was stunned, no longer looking at her, but at the other two. Erica and Mia were there. Of course, the guy asked what they were doing here. The girl said that they also want to try shampoo and the rest. The guy said, well, okay then. Smiling tightly, the guy said that it seemed like all girls wanted to be beautiful, no matter what world they were born in. After that, the guy called Nabi but did not find her. And then, looking around, he saw her, along with the sleeping Hatchai and Spittle, who was standing over them. Smiling, the guy said that it was very cute and took a picture of them. Some time later, Mia, looking at her hair, admiringly said that her hair had really become soft and crumbly. The guy smiled and said that he was glad that they were satisfied. Then the guy handed over three more boxes and asked if they wanted to try it too. The girls asked what it was and the guy said it was a moisturizing lotion, face cream and body cream. Of course, everyone agreed. The guy explained that the lotion provides the necessary hydration, while not increasing the oil content of the skin, establishing an ideal balance. In addition, it gives a restorative effect. Then Mia said that she could still understand the cream, but why also the lotion? The guy said that the light texture is better absorbed, and if you put cream on top of the lotion, they improve each other's actions. When everyone tried and felt the magical effect of the creams, the guy showed another cream and said that it was intended for the body. The next morning, Iris got up and looked in the mirror and was very pleased because her hair was shining and her face was shining. Beauty and nothing better. After that, she went to Mr. Luke and said it was time to get up, but she fidgeted. After all, someone was sleeping next to him. And so the guy was sleeping smiling and there was a girl next to him. Seeing this, Iris screamed at the top of her voice, so the awakened Luke wished good morning and was stunned. Outraged, Iris asked who was sleeping next to him. Mia was there too, and she screamed all red that he had her, so who was the girl next to him? The guy, not understanding what they were talking about, turned around and saw the girl, stunned, recoiled thinking about who else it was. The guy screamed that he didn't know himself, and then told her to get up. At the same time, Nabi woke up and wished good morning to the owner, and the guy asked Nabi if she knew this person. The girl asked who he was talking about, and then the girl herself jumped out abruptly, cheerfully greeting the owner. The surprised guy asked if it was really Diana, to which the girl nodded, and the other two said in surprise that it was a dragon. The surprised girl asked the owner that he really did not know that there was already a magical connection between them. The surprised guy said then and that the dragon can turn into people or something. Then he asked Iris to lend her whatever clothes she had. Then the guy asked Diana about how she got here, and she pointed to the broken window. The stunned guy asked what she had done at all. The girl indignantly said that it was not her fault. It was just that all the rooms were already dark. She shouldn't be hanging around like this. She barely found the owner's room and climbed in. The guy said that he didn't hear anything, and then stretched out. Nabi said that she called him, but he was fast asleep. Then Iris came with clothes and told the lady dragon that the clothes were nailed. 
Diana took out her underpants and asked what it was, to which the confused Iris screamed that they should not be stretched like that. Hatchai also woke up, and the guy greeted him and apologized for the noise. Some time later, everyone got ready and they went for a walk. It was morning and while everyone was doing their business, there was a knock on the door. When Iris opened the door, Zeno appeared in front of her. The man apologized for the early visit, and the guy asked what brought him here, and the king asked Mia for forgiveness in advance, and then told Luke to understand him correctly. After that, he bowed and said that there were people whose lives needed to be saved. They are weak, so much so that they are already on the verge of death, and therefore he asks him to save these people. Of course, everyone was stunned that his highness knelt down. Then Nabai told the guy not to worry, because his magic power increased with the acquisition of familiars, and passive skills of accelerated, and enhanced treatment were added, so that he could cure as many people as he wanted. The guy said they only have one lecture today, so he agrees. Of course, this pleased Zeno, but the guy said that he had a condition. Zeno asked what the condition was, and the guy said that his name should be kept secret. If the patients are from a noble family, then let them make donations for the treatment, and they will give a day for the construction of hospitals. Surprised, Zeno asked what about his personal benefit. He also has a chance to become famous, to which the guy said that he did not need fame at all. Then the guy said that they needed to vacate a large house with several rooms and gather all the patients in this house. Then the guy said that the number of people can be loved. And the king asked if there was really no limit. And the guy nodded. Then the guy said that he could teach others healing magic. He can also gather five magicians who serve in the temple and possess magic at the fifth level and antidote magic at the highest level. Surprised, Zeno asked if it was possible to teach such a thing and whether it was worth throwing away such knowledge. Then the guy said he didn't want to cash in on saving lives. Therefore, he will teach this magic to the nuns, then all donations from the healed people will go to the needs of hospitals and orphanages. The surprised guy grabbed Luke's hand and thanked him to the imperial family that he would try to thank him generously. Iris and Mia were delighted with Luke's action. The first was the house of the royal guard. When the guy checked the condition, it was tuberculosis in critical condition. Seeing this, the guy said that maybe they were already too late. Zeno nodded and said he understood. The guy used cleansing and told them to take off the patient's clothes. After looking at the body, the guy said that there were deep bed sores. Then he told Iris to give him a scalpel, and the girl hurried to take action. Zeno turned to the maid and shouted asking why they had not brought the healer earlier, to which the girl crying said that she was very sorry. Then the guy said that it was not easy for both of them, but now they need to take care of the patient. Gloomy, the king asked for forgiveness and said that he had simply succumbed to emotions. He and this man studied together at the Knight Academy, and after graduation, he joined the ranks of the Royal Guard. He got this scar on his back while covering for the king during the assassination attempt. The guy, looking at him, thought that if not treated immediately, the poison blade leaves a scar that looks like a burn. The guy said that he was his friend. The guy took out something and Iris asked what it was. The guy said it was a medicinal nutrient composition. Provides nutrients for the whole day. Zeno with tanned eyes said that it was Edward's secret potion. Suddenly the guard came to his senses and asked his highness why he was here. Then Zeno asked how he was feeling. Then the guardian told him to leave soon, because he might get infected. Smiling, Zeno said that this was not the case, because he had brought a strong healer magician today. The guard looked at the guy and smiled and said that he was not cheating on himself. I wish he had so much optimism. Then he asked if he was going to get better, to which the guy said that tuberculosis could still be overcome. But success depended on his will to live. Luke has been treated with magic. He should be getting better by now. After that, Zeno said he was going to check on the family now. At the king's castle, Zeno led Luke and Iris and said that there were four healing sessions in the morning. Zeno was really grateful to Luke. After that, Zeno said that seven nuns and pontiffs with magical abilities would arrive at his castle tomorrow. Would the guy be able to teach them healing magic? The guy nodded and said that of course he could. After that, Zeno said that he had spent a lot of magic and mental strength today. Therefore, now you need to rest and have a good meal. They can eat their fill. When the butler opened the door, they saw a gorgeous table. Then Zeno said that he could see that the guy was already used to Diana's charming appearance. Then he added that, by the way, she was once the guardian dragon of the city of Garel. The guy tilted his head and Zeno said that this was a very famous legend. 600 years ago there was a village of Garel in the mountains. Once a black dragon saved the inhabitants from evil magical creatures, in return they offered three barrels of excellent wine. 
the dragon descended to the ground and turned into a lovely girl in front of everyone's eyes. The villagers received her with honors, and they cheerfully celebrated the victory praising the kindness and strength of the dragon. And then, from the scales left after the transformation, the heralds began to forge incredibly durable armor and weapons. Thanks to this, the village soon became a city. Then Nabai told the guy that it looked like King Zeno himself would not refuse dragon scales. The guy said that he wouldn't mind either, because the dragon makes nests. Nabai nodded. Then the guy said that he wanted to find Diana's nest, and Zeno nodded and said that dwarves and elves have a very long time. The children of those heralds are probably still alive. Zeno thought that they would be very happy if they saw Diana. After that, they sat in the carriage. When they were riding in the carriage, Iris suddenly said that they could visit her friend on the way. She is her relative and friend. The guy nodded, and then they told him that first of all, he needed to visit his relatives, but the more important reason was political. The guy asked about what kind of politics, and Mia's mother explained that political forces always compete with each other and if men are usually restrained, then their wives can talk about something while chatting over a cup of tea. Listening to this, the guy thought that this was a secret society of wives or something. Smiling, Mia said that Mr. Luke had everything written on his face, so he shouldn't worry so much, because they were just drinking tea and having fun. The girl said that they were just complaining about each other's lives and sharing the news. Aristocrats often plot. It is very important that the wife is able to sense something is wrong and warn her husband in time. Then, the woman said that Mia was not allowed to have such tea parties. The guy nodded, said that was for sure, because Mia immediately sees the lie. The queen nodded and said that if the guests found out that she was invited, then everyone immediately refused to come. Quickly realizing that it was because of her, Mia stopped going to tea herself. Then the guy said that then they would not invite any of them to their place, but he thought to himself that Nabai could provide information. Carmia wanted to object, but the guy said that since his status gave him such an opportunity, he wanted to protect Mia from such an environment. This surprised the queen, and she said that when Zeno clung to the guy with a death grip, she thought it was a waste of time, but now she realizes that he sees through people, just like Mia. Well, he can do as he wants, and they can hold on to him. The guy smiled and thanked them for it. After that, the queen looked at Iris and said that there was clearly no oil on her hair, then why did they look so shiny and smooth? Then Mia's mother, with a twinkle in her eyes, said that she had noticed it too. While Iris did not understand what was happening, the two queens began to touch her hair. Some time later at the academy, the guy was sleeping on the couch, and then the queens appeared and cheerfully said that it was amazing. She would never have thought that such a thing could happen. Now the skin is soft and smooth, it's just a miracle. And that's how the two queens applied the cream to the skin and Iris looked after them. Mia and Erica came into the room and of course they saw it. The guy greeted Mia and asked what her familiar was about, to which she said that everything was fine. But she was more interested in what her mother was doing here. Then Mia's mother cheerfully said that they had washed their hair and tried skin products. It is very comfortable. The surprised girl asked who showed it to them, to which the queen said it was Iris. And then, with tears in her eyes, she said that her daughter was really going to hide these miracles and use them in secret. Words cannot express how sad it is for her. From this, the girl pouted and said that actually she hadn't even had time to tell Amelia and Natalie yet. They just cheekily got to the cosmetics before everyone else. Amelia shuddered when she heard this, and then said that she of course understands that the funds are rare, but could Mr. Luke give them to her to try? The surprised guy thought that it looked like Emilia had spoken on her own. Then Navi said that to be honest, she also wanted to ask him for a cream. She thinks that Emilia just lost her head and forgot about her fears. The guy smiled and thought that this was a good sign, and Navi said that this was how great the power of cosmetics over girls was. The guy smiled and said that of course he would give these funds to her and Natalie. The girl happily thanked Luke. Then Diana appeared and screamed that she needed it too. Noticing her, the queen said in surprise that it really is a dragon in human form. The dragon nodded and said she was Diana. Then she asked Mia if it was really her mom, because they looked like two peas in a pod. Then Milana asked for a petition and said that she was the second wife of King Zeno. Then Carmia bowed and said that she was the first spouse and her name was Carmia. The dragon simply nodded. The guy thought about it and said that he wasn't going to make so much makeup but there were so many people willing. He wondered if he should take advantage of it or something. Who should he entrust it to? Then Mia smiled and asked what the guy thought about trading. While the guy was thinking, Nabai asked him if he could entrust it to Iris's family. The guy thought that a couple of years ago their estate had increased. There was enough space, 
but where could they get raw materials? Then Nabai said that they could grow the necessary crops themselves. In the long run, this will help keep the price of goods low. Looking at Iris, the guy asked her about her father, Count Michael, what kind of person he was. Then Iris asked why Luke was asking, to which he said that he was thinking about entrusting her family with the production of shampoo and other cosmetics. Of course, this shocked the girl, but Erica was outraged and asked why only Iris. What about her family? Then the guy asked if Erica's family had a lot of land. She froze, and then coughed dryly, said that this was not the case. Since her father is in the royal guard, they don't have their own estate. At the same time, the guy explained that since a lot of vegetable raw materials are needed for the production of cosmetics, he wants to entrust it to those who have fertile lands. Nodding, Mia said she understood. Then she said that Iris has a wonderful father. He received the title of Count because he founded a new settlement on undeveloped lands. Iris happily said that she was so glad that he decided to entrust them with an important task. Then the guy said that at the end of the week he would go to treat Duchess Sasha. Could he then meet Iris's father? Then Iris said that she would warn him about it. Thinking about it, the guy said that he thought it would be better to distribute the responsibility. Maybe Duke Gale will take over some of the worries. Count Michael will be responsible for the production. And Duke Gale will be responsible for the supply of goods. This way they will be able to create channels for the sale of goods. Iris's eyes lit up and she said that it was great because the duke would even be able to supply their cosmetics to the royal palace. Smiling, Milana said that Mia had chosen a great husband for herself, to which Carmia said that Luke was not only visionary, but also took care of others. Nabai was glad that the owner was appreciated. At the same time, Nabai said that Iris was also madly in love with him, and Mia, who also sees the color of the aura and therefore seems jealous. While the maids were cooking in the kitchen, Carmia asked Mr. Luke about what other skin products he could make. The guy thought about it and said that it was probably sunscreen. Then Mia asked if he was wearing sunscreen so that he wouldn't get a tan. The guy nodded. The guy asked if they protect the skin from the sun, to which Milana nodded and said that it was so, but if you stay outside for a long time, it does not save. Healing magic helps, but still, Milana has fair skin, so she quickly burns in the sun. Then the guy said that because of the sun, the skin also ages quickly. Upon hearing this, the two women abruptly stood up from their seats and shouted that Mr. Luke should definitely make this cream. Seeing their excitement, the guy said that he understood and would do it. There was a knock on the door, and when it was opened it turned out to be the royal guard. He bowed and said that his highness had ordered him to return both spouses to the palace. Both queens pouted at this, but the guardian ignored it and handed Luke a bottle and said that his highness also told him to give it to him. Seeing this, Luke happily said that it was for Hatchai. Then he told him to convey his thanks. The guardian said that he certainly does it. After that, the girl went to the bathroom, and the guy started training. Iris, seeing his face, told him to forget about the girls in the bathroom and get ready, to which the guy thought about that. But he also liked how they laugh. Then the guy said that it looked like his stomach had shrunk a little, judging by the belt. Iris happily congratulated him on this. When he finally finished all sweaty, the girls appeared and Amelia in front thanked the guy for these wonderful remedies. The guy said that if she liked it, then it means he did not try in vain. The guy thought that she was the first to talk to him, and this is a good sign. He will use healing magic a little more. While Mia was sitting with Spittle, Hatchai came up to them and looked at Spittle. The guy said that he had such soft fur now, to which Mia said that baby Spittle was cute. The guy, all sweaty, said he was going to take a bath, to which Iris nodded. Soon he went into the bathroom with Diana and Nabai. Then he said that Diana could not be with him, to which the surprised girl asked if he was really kicking her out. But he had helped her wash before, of course. The guy said that she was a dragon then, now everything has changed. Then Diana said that then let Nabai leave too, because she also looks like a human being. Clenching her fists, Nabai asked what kind of vulgar hints they were. Then she screamed that she did not agree to this, and then said that it was better that both she and Diana go to the bathroom with him. Diana also agreed with this, and then said that they did not say anything when he took concubines. Now it's his turn to give in and not complain. The guy couldn't object, and in the end he still gave in, and so Diana, looking at all this foam, could only enjoy. While the guy was washing her hair, she happily said that it was so nice, this foam was so soft. Hatchai, who was also in the bathroom, was also smiling and having fun. Seeing this, the guy smiled and said that it looked like he was pleased. After that, Diana said that now they would wash him, and then she began to foam the guy's body. Smiling, the girl said that she was so grateful that she could become a human being. After that, the guy applied healing magic to Hatchai, 
and then taking the fruits, he began to squeeze the juices out of them. And then taking everything into a bottle, Hachai gave it to him in his mouth. Seeing how Luke was feeding Hachai, Mia said what a cutie he was. The guy held out a plate of juices and asked Spinel if he wanted to, to which the animal meowed. When he started drinking like a cat, the three girls could not remain indifferent and looking at him with affection, said that Spinel was a cutie. As a result, both Spinel and Hachai fell asleep. Seeing this, Mia picked it up and said that perhaps they would go to bed, and Iris, seeing off the guests, said that then now she would take a bath. Mia had a last word with Luke, and the guy did the same. The guy sighed and thought that he had one more case left. Nabai said that the wax crayons are ready, but don't you need to make more flowers? Then the guy said that six would be enough to start with. After that, Nabai yawned, and then said that it meant that everything he asked for yesterday was done, whether he is satisfied with the result. The guy, seeing that his familiars were tired, said that everything was fine, so they could go to sleep. After wishing the guy a good night, Nabai fell asleep with Diana and Hachai. Meanwhile, the guy started making booklets about viruses and microbes. After learning about the existence of microbes, local doctors will be able to investigate them and thus medicine will move forward. Some time later, Iris came out of the tub and saw that Luke had something to do and asked about it. The guy said without looking up that he was making a booklet for doctors on how to heal diseases. The girl pouted and noticing this, the guy asked about what it was. The girl came up and said that then he should share such valuable knowledge with her. Then the guy said that of course it was, he was going to show the booklet to her first. This confession made Iris's eyes sparkle. After looking at her, the guy asked how she thought it was clearer with colored paintings or not, because the girl said that of course it was so. Then she looked at the markers with a twinkle in her eyes and said that these colored sticks were so bright. Some time later, the guy finished with the case and said that he hoped that there would be enough pictures. Then turning to Iris, he smiled and said that now he would explain everything. The guy pointed to the picture and asked if she saw the black grains that fly out when coughing. The girl nodded and asked that they cause the disease. The guy nodded and said that he had drawn them for clarity. But in fact, the eyes cannot see them. This requires special tools and skills. The girl did not understand what the guy was talking about and the guy said that he would now show Iris one image. But she should not tell anyone about it. Then the guy showed her a photo with viruses and the surprised girl asked that these were the sources of diseases, to which the guy smiled and said that it looked like an abstract painting, didn't it? Nodding, the girl said that it was as if everything was covered with thorns. The guy nodded and said that these invisible particles cause colds. Then he pointed to another picture and said that these are the causative agents of tuberculosis. The surprised girl said that they were already without thorns. Then the guy said that they come in different shapes and colors. Then the girl with a twinkle in her eyes asked if it would be better to show it to everyone. To which the guy sighed and said that the doctors should work on their own. He did not have to explain everything to them. The girl thoughtfully said that this was probably true, but how did the guy himself find out even in such details? Is it really from his wise mentor? Feeling awkward, the guy remembered the sleepless nights and said that well, he had found out a lot himself, even the wise men might not know this. Then Iris said that pictures were a great power, to which the guy nodded, and thought to himself that he also had Nabi, also a kind of skill. Then the guy said that although he would soon share his knowledge with several healers, they should keep this conversation a secret. The girl shuddered, and then blushing, said that now she understood everything. Then she thanked the guy for trusting her, because she was very flattered. The guy then said that when she would use healing magic, she should try to imagine that she was expelling the source of the disease from her body. The girl nodded and said that she seemed to understand what he was talking about. The guy then went over to the sleeping forms and covered them with a blanket. Iris soon went to bed too and wished the guy a good night. However, Luke himself also went to sleep, but as soon as he lay down, he could not fall asleep. Thoughts of tomorrow kept him awake. He shouldn't be thinking about tomorrow's event. Although people's lives depend on this meeting, all sorts of important people will come. It was really exciting. Unable to fall asleep, he got up and went to a chair, and then took the necessary herbs and began to cook something. Some time later, there was a knock on his room and he was asked if he could enter. The guy allowed it, thinking to himself that he was really making noise. Iris came in and looked at him with displeasure. Then she asked what he meant, he was preparing medicine, but he didn't call her. Upon hearing this accusation, the guy immediately told her to wait, but Iris narrowed her eyes and said that he was grinding turmeric. It is considered useful for the stomach and liver. The rest of the ingredients are medicinal. She studied medicine, so she understood everything at a glance. Then the guy said that he was not going to hide anything, 
and if she would help, he would share the recipe with her. Surprised and at the same time delighted, the girl asked if it was true. Luke said he wanted to grind everything into powder. The girl tilted her head and the guy explained that he probably would have to use whatever spell. Thinking about it, the girl said that either crushing or crushing was needed. Then she said that she wanted to master them, but she couldn't. Then she asked why there were so many of them. Was it really necessary for tomorrow's meeting with the doctors? The guy shook his head and said no, not for that. And suddenly a light bulb clicked in his head and he remembered that he already had conversion skills. He had both shredding and crushing. He raised it to the second level and began to create magic. Seeing that everything had turned to powder, the guy happily said that everything was ready. After that, he distributed the things into cups and poured everything out there. The girl looked suspiciously at the guy and asked if he would tell the recipe or not. Then the guy said that they had prepared the powder today, and they would do the rest tomorrow. He came up with it for Lala once. The surprised girl asked if Mrs. Lala was really ill, and the guy shook his head and said that this remedy had helped him out more than once. So then he would definitely explain everything to her. He promised. The morning began with the fact that Diana woke Luke up. Looking at her, the guy asked if she was really naked again. With a chuckle, the girl said that she did not like the clothes, but at night she could do without them. Getting up, Nabai said that a saddle for Diana had been made in the workshop. Looking away, Diana said she couldn't stand the saddle either. Outraged, Nabai shouted at Diana, telling her not to be selfish, because what if the owner falls during the flight? Grimacing, Diana said that she would not allow this to happen. Smiling, Luke thanked Diana. In the morning, in a huge mansion, the carriage stopped nearby. The king came out and greeted Luke. The guy smiled and greeted his highness. Looking at the king's wide smile, the guy thought that the king himself had come out to meet them. Then Nabai suggested that he was probably worried about his friend's health. In addition, finding a way to treat tuberculosis is a problem of national importance. The king felt it necessary to be present. The surprised guy asked if he was really afraid that Luke would use knowledge against him. Then Nabai said that it was very likely. After all, he was recently known as the Pig Prince in several kingdoms. King Zeno's concerns are understandable. After looking at the guy, the king said that they had brought 15 tuberculosis patients here. Was Luke sure that he could handle everything? The guy nodded, and then asked if the healers had nailed it too, to which the king nodded. He said they were waiting in the main hall. Then the king said that seven pontiffs and sisters of mercy from different churches had arrived. And from Zeno himself, there are three more court healers, can the guy teach them too? The guy wasn't very happy with the overseers, but King Zeno doesn't want only churchmen to have knowledge, and he's probably right. The guy nodded with a smile and the king breathed a sigh of relief. Soon they arrived in the hall, and the pontiff recognized Luke and came forward to greet him. The guy shook his hand too, of course. Then the pontiff said that he had been informed that he had kindly agreed to teach them how to cure people of tuberculosis. He couldn't sleep all night from excitement. Trembling and shedding tears, the pontiff said that it was incredible how many lives they would be able to save. Smiling, the guy said that well, then they will be able to teach others themselves. A lot of people were already sitting in the hall. When everyone sat down, the guy stood on the podium and took out the pictures, said that before the demonstration. In practice, they should study some theoretical foundations. He explained in detail how tuberculosis spreads. Yesterday he made this booklet with pictures. As soon as the guy uttered these words, immediately one black-haired guy stood up indignantly and shouted that he was really holding them for fools. The guy calmly said that he just wanted everyone to understand. Startled, the brunette did not even know what to say. Nabai explained that he was a good healer, but it looked like he had feelings for Mia. Frowning, the guy said, he thought that this was a healer at court, and then he remembered the piles of his future wife and said that he could see Mia's piles. Grimacing, Nabai said that this remark was discouraging, but the king's spouses and daughters were served by female healers. By the way, some of them are here today too. At the same time, the enraged king shouted at this doctor, shouting that his attacks were inappropriate now. Of course, the brunette immediately bowed and asked for forgiveness. After that, the guy started explaining with pictures how everything was made up, and everyone turned pale or was surprised. After the lecture, the guy asked if they had any questions. One especially raised her hand and the guy let her stand up. The nun said that the particles invisible to the eye that cause diseases, to be honest, it's hard to believe. How can he prove that they really exist if they are invisible? When the guy heard this question, he thought that it was worth expecting. Then he suddenly noticed one girl who was doing something with her hands and wondered what it was. Then Nabai told the guy that this is the magic of approximation. Probably the power is comparable to a microscope. Suddenly, this girl started in fright, and seeing this, the guy said that she seemed to have found confirmation of his story. 
Then the guy asked if anyone had ever thought about where the green spots on the bread come from. The surprised girl said that it was true. Then the guy said that knights often complain that their feet itch. Zeno was surprised now. Then Zeno asked what the guy meant by water bugs, to which the guy said that, well, apparently yes. Nam I said that in Edo era Japan, the fungus was also called water bugs or field bugs. Back then, people thought that itching was caused not by microbes, but by insects living in water or soil. The embarrassed king said that, to be honest, his own feet itched and then the guy asked him if he could take off his shoes and he nodded. The guy turned pale when he saw his leg. The nails haven't been touched yet, but it's definitely a fungus. The diagnosis did not determine anything. The guy wondered why diagnostic magic didn't work and Nabi told him that his skill was too weak. Therefore, not very serious illnesses are not determined by magic. Sighing, Zeno asked what it meant and it would not be possible to cure them. The guy with the glasses said that they can be cured in the same way as tuberculosis. Now the king was delighted and the guy said that first he had to take a sample of the damaged skin. Taking out a pair of tweezers, he touched the skin and then and then caused a drop of water, making a lens out of it. Nabi noticed this and said that the idea was good, but it was unlikely to work out. The guy told her that if you put a few together, they can see the causative agent of infections, can't they? Then Nabi said that microscopes have special lenses, you just can't get them. While he was doing something with the water, the others looked at him with a puzzled face. The guy asked what it meant to give up better, to which Nabi said that it was not necessary. She thinks they can still show the microbes. Now he used a floating spell to hang the piece in the air, and direct a ray of light there from below. Now they create four lenses with water magic, and apply an approximation to them and stack them on top of each other. That's how they can see. While everyone was admiring, one girl repeated after him and said that she had succeeded too. The delighted guy said they could take a look, and then explained that these fibers were water bugs. Now you need to separate them from the skin sample. Then the guy asked Iris if she wanted to try it first. She nodded, and the guy told her to imagine how to eliminate harmful microbes and direct healing magic there. The girl did as she was told and the skin was cured. The guy smiled and said that the painful germs had been removed. With a twinkle in her eyes, the girl said that tuberculosis can be cured as well. Nodding, the guy said that it was so, and the result would be obvious. Even with average skills, meanwhile, Zeno was admiring Nu, who had been cured. And when he wanted to put on shoes, Luke said that if he put on the same shoes again, he would catch the fungus again. Of course, this shocked the king. After that, it was time to practice and the temple staff did as they were told. Seeing this, the guy said that they were very good at magic, was it really some kind of special kind? Then the pontiff said that it was actually Luke who was doing great magic. The result of the treatment is simply amazing. He had already seen a lot in his lifetime, but they had lost so many lives. The guy said that this method works for the flu, and he thinks it helps for other diseases too. While the pontiff was surprised, the guy said that, however, in each case, it would be necessary to represent something different. It is not always enough just to remove the reason. If there are inflammatory processes, then they also need to be eliminated, otherwise the fever will not subside. In tuberculosis, inflammation occurs in the lungs, and during treatment it is necessary to imagine how it disappears. The guy thought to himself that, however, high-level healers with the help of his method can immediately cure even advanced tuberculosis. The guy asked Nabi if their skill was much higher than his, to which Nabi said that it was so. Then she asked the guy if he really wanted to raise the level of magic as soon as possible. Although he is better versed in the causes of diseases than they are, it has become obvious how big the difference is between intermediate and higher level magicians.